What is going on, everyone? Welcome to a blessed episode of Xbox Chatter Days. This is your host, Miles Dompierre, and today I am joined by a very special guest, Mr. RDX himself, Dealer. How you doing on this fine Saturday morning, my man? Mr. Hardy, I'm doing fine, Miles. Thanks for having me. Oh, yes. Um, I appreciate you getting up <laughs> early on a Saturday and hanging out with me. Um, yeah. yeah. Xbox launch is coming up. So today, Dealer and I are going to be talking about Xbox Series X and S. Uh, we're going to be talking about the launch lineup. And we are going to be talking about kind of our hopes for the future of Xbox. And also, playing a little Gears 5. There's so many hopes, Miles. So There's so, hopes. exactly. The, the future is bright. So first off, I know everyone here probably already knows who you are, but go ahead and give us a little introduction into Dealer, the man behind the tag. Uh, I'm actually a ghoul. Oh, and, uh, spooky. No, I, I, uh, <laughs> spooky. I, uh, yeah, first and foremost, thanks everyone for joining us live. Um, seriously, thank you guys. If you, if, you, if you haven't hit the like button, share it out. We, we do appreciate it. Let me do that for Miles since he's incompetent. Oh, okay? yeah, secondly, okay. Hype me up, bro. You're my hype man. Let's go. Thanks to Miles for, uh, for having me on. And, and Windows Central, again, got to say it again, uh, these guys are some of the best and, and some of the only people that, that uh, knew what they were talking about when it came to the next-gen stuff and, oh, mm, and locking mm. that stuff down and being accurate on that stuff. So, again, um, thanks for having me on. And, and uh, yeah, it should be it should be fun, man. I've yeah. been kind of I've been wanting to play more Gears Five on Series X, as you guys know, I'm on Series X right now, and uh, it looks gorgeous. So I'd love to play more Gears Five, and why not with with Miles Dampier, the French Don, guy. Oh yes, okay, cool. Dampier. No, I'm I'm stoked. I mean, this is honestly probably the first time you and I have played games together. So I'm excited to sit down and, you know, I've been on RDX before, so I've had a chance to talk to you, but obviously this is a, a little more intimate, uh, just a, a, a spicy one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm excited to kind of get to know you a little bit more and kind of, you know, give everyone a chance to get to know you in a more intimate experience, I guess. Well, um, you know, we don't have to use that word intimate, but I hear you. I'm going to use intimate probably 45 <laughs> more times throughout this. No, you got to go hard or, or, you know, you got to go 100% with it. Come exactly. On. You got to. <laughs> so some housekeeping stuff. I just really quickly want to shout out. We got 72 people here. Xbox, Pope, Assassin, Lupa, a ton of awesome people hanging out. I uh, really appreciate you guys being here on, on time. Props to you. Saturday morning, <laughs> evening, afternoon. I also want to take a quick second to just kind of thank the community that we've been building over here on the, the Windows Central gaming channel. Um, obviously, a lot of you are familiar with Windows Central as a site, um, but the, the video segment has kind of been just an offshoot that Jez and I have been working really hard to kind of prove to our parent company that this is something they need to invest more in. So we started this year with 2,600, 2,658 subs, something like that, back in January. And um, we are on the cusp of uh, 19k right now. We are just just a hair away from 19,000 subs, which is huge. So huge thanks to everyone who's tuned in, watched videos, shared our content. It means a ton. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to thank you guys for, you guys for all are the support. Quick. Yeah, yeah. Last it's, time I checked, you were at 10. What, what the hell are you doing over here? What your secrets? We're, we're putting in some work. I don't know. It, no, it's been awesome. It's just you know I've seen the same people commenting on videos, and it it, it means a lot to us because yeah, this has yeah. just been like a, a side hustle more or less for Jez and I trying to prove to our corporate overlords that this is um something that we need to be investing more in. So <laughs> super super honesty, yeah, and integrity, Ex important. yeah. Uh, so super chat hype, Mr. Joanna Dark, RDX, 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 Windows Central, Windows Central, just want to get an ECW chant. Okay, chant? Can we get a chant? Is that what he's trying to do in the hype? Yeah, he's, he's rocking it. Shout out to you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate that. And then Assassin Lupa, welcome to the supporter tier. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so we're going to be playing a little, um, mostly co-op campaign to start, um, and then we'll kind of we'll transition into some some PvP later on. Get a little spicy. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! You hear me? Little rats and little mouse feet. What the hell's going on over there? Oh, all right. Let's yeah, do let it. us know what you think's going on over there. So first off, let's uh, hold on. Give me just a sec. I got Windows notifications just blasting off over here, even though they're muted. So um, you know, I like the spice. I like the. Uh, the variety here so 
Real quick. You lack of the spice. I lack of the spice. So real quick, let's dive into... I'm sure viewers at this point are pretty inundated with Xbox Series X and S information. But the reviews are officially live, so kind of everything's on the table for that. So let's start with where you're at right now with, with the Xbox Series X, and then I'll dive a little bit into kind of details on the Series S. Because you just received a Series X, correct? Uh, several weeks back, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so dive, what, what, right now, what, how do you feel about the Series X? I know you have a review on your channel, so if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you watch his official review, but just as a general it's gonna be, sense. The review is definitely uh, much more entertaining. If you guys know me, I definitely try to make things at least entertaining to watch, right? Especially if it's, like, uh, informational. Uh, but, uh, honestly, Series X is, uh, man. Just going back, I, I'm going to release a video after the show, like right after the show, actually. That's probably when I'll drop it. Uh, just showing once more why Series X is, it's something, it's a, it's the pinnacle of what's possible right now in console gaming, right? Oh. Meaning, in a lot of other worlds, the collective performance here, which, by the way, we haven't even really seen yet, is, <laughs> it, it, it's the best case scenario for $500. It really is. And it has all of this stuff that people thought was going to be $1,000. They thought this thing was... You remember people saying this thing was going to be $700, dollars Uh-huh, yeah, easy. Like, look at these specs. There's no way it's going to be $500. There's no way. I'll There's no way. I'll this in three months. No way. Uh, and honestly, like, uh, it, it really is something special when it comes to console hardware. And I think the PS5 is shaping up to be great as well for the price, especially if you get it for the $400. Like, that's a great deal. It, it, it doesn't matter what you have. Like... The architectures are there to supply you with frame rates, physics, effects, particles, all kinds of stuff now that you just couldn't get before really on console and at a fidelity that you clearly have never seen before. And I think when people get this stuff in their homes, like my YouTube video is still stuck at 1080p. Like they're not processing it correctly. Like I've contacted them. I don't know. But point is, it just, it's not going to do it justice. Like it, Gears 5 looks incredible, you know? Looks absolutely insane. Yeah, you, are you we, picking we, a level or am I? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead. We're just to start at the beginning. Why not? Let's keep it. Keep oh, it the easy. Cutscenes and whatnot. Oh, yeah. oh shoot. Yeah, uh, Miles, you trying to watch a movie during a stream? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, the beginning looks amazing. But yeah, no, you're you're totally right. It's for the price point. The value proposition of the Series X is is insane. Um, yeah. For the most part, when when a console launches. It's typically launching at the tail end of spec. Um, so what's really cool about this generation and with the Xbox Series X specifically is that this console is launching with a lot of brand it's new for tech. The future. Yeah, it, it, it's very future proofed, which compared to PS4 and Xbox One especially, we launched the generation pretty stifled. We were already kind of behind when, the, when that generation launched. So it's super exciting at this point to have a console that is launching with Literally tech that is brand new. RDNA 2, brand yeah. brand new. Like that stuff. And stuff that just didn't exist before, like like quick resume and, and the velocity architecture, which is their way of getting around physical RAM limitations and bandwidth. It's it's ingenious how many things they've done to provide you something that you really have never dealt with before. Like again, like the SSD is quick enough, but how about you click on Arkham Knight two weeks later and it's still running? Or suspend run, right? I mean, that kind of stuff is really, really cool. And that's on top of, like, auto HDR. Like, if you've got a good, like, uh, Lupa, for instance, in the chat, she just got an OLED. Like, every game, no matter what it is, so far from my experience, has auto HDR, which stands out. And it looks, it, it, I think it augments the image in a great way. It adds another dimension of depth. Uh, and it's very impressive. But, Miles, we, I mean, if you're looking for, like, new software, like, first party-wise, you know, Hey, it ain't here right now. But if you're looking for the best place to play, up, you know, what is likely your favorite games, like Assassin's Creed, right? Then you should get that with Series X. And as a console guy, I want the best performance possible because I don't want to play on PC. Yeah, for me, it's I'm, I'm a filthy console heathen. I have a very capable <laughs> PC. Like I understand that, it, technically speaking, especially with the Xbox One X, that my PC would play the games, generally speaking, better higher frame rates, higher resolution, but I was still found myself playing on my One X more than my PC. Um, so it's, as a console first kind of player, it is really exciting to have a legit premium experience. 
like hearing about games like Gears 5, which for the most part, when it launches, when when that kind of big patch comes through for everyone and they boot it up for the first time, it's literally beyond what you can get on PC right now. Granted, yep. those updates will come to PC and you will be able to take advantage of that performance. But to have a experience on console at launch that is impossible on PC is huge. That's such a big deal. And it shows that Microsoft you know, took that commitment of having the world's most powerful console very seriously. So Yeah, I mean, that's one way to put it for sure. I mean, but I mean, I don't even... I don't even say like, hey, you know, I know you're not insinuating like get it because you can't get on it. it even, even this cutscene, right? This is a pre-render video right now. This has auto HDR on it. I'm seeing HDR on this, where the original version does not have that. Uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't even like stack it against PC even. I mean, you're right. It does have all the settings of Ultra uh, for the most part, I think except for one. And then, uh, well, it has Ultra across the board, but there are insane settings on Gears, right? So it's missing some of those, but it does have 50% more particle, particles and a ridiculously taxing like global illumination system, which is probably 20, 15, 20 frames off the top when you turn that on. That's how demanding that is. Yeah, uh, And it's still running it at a very good resolution and frame rate. It, when, what is likely not a super optimized game? Like if you look at Gears 4, Gears 4 was 1080p60 on the X the first year. Gears 5 was over double that resolution at the same frame rate with a, with a semi-open world with a better looking game. And that's just because they built Gears 5 from the ground up with the X in mind, meaning they started development from the beginning with the with the platform in hand. They didn't go back to it. So future games are gonna look nuts on this thing. Like I think people I think people get that though. It's gonna look great. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we can kind of segue into the launch situation a little bit. Um First off, Mr. Joanna Dark, member tier. Welcome aboard. Appreciate that. Huge shout out to the 136 we have hanging out right now. But yeah, as it stands, um, a legitimate kind of issue, I guess, is that, you know, there isn't a huge first party new launch game on the Series X. Yep. Um, if you're an Xbox fan, that's OK. You have an established library of titles that you can play and will look better. Um, sea of Thieves, Gears of War. Um, there's a huge. And you don't even have to upgrade, right? Exactly. You don't have to upgrade, which is something I don't think a lot of people are focusing on enough. Like that, people are talking about how cross gen is held and stuff back, not understanding you know what actually gets held back when it comes to game design and graphics. But then they forget that previously, like from 360 to Xbox One, I had several friends that I couldn't talk to for months. Oh, because yeah, we couldn't even party music, chat together. Couldn't yeah. party chat, couldn't play, games didn't carry over, nothing worked. Now, you can, you can wait that six months to get a Series X if you can't find one, and you can play all the same games, and you know what, you'll be better for it, because you might even get it cheaper. Yeah, that, that's a huge point. That's a huge kind of player-focused point to the Xbox Series launch, the X and the S, is you don't necessarily have to upgrade right away, which is huge because like you said, yeah, last generation, I remember there was a few friends of like our core friend group who played games every day that just weren't able to upgrade at launch. So we, yeah. we couldn't party chat together. We couldn't play the same games together. And at least now there's a little bit of a transition period where, you know, we can still play, even though some of us are going to be taking advantage of those performance upgrades. We can still go online and play Gears together. We can go still yeah. go online and play Sea of Thieves together. So there's, you know, you're not going to be leaving your friends behind if they, for, you know, it's it's a tough year for it's, a lot of people right now. So not everyone has 500 bucks is, uh, to just flaming trash can. Yeah, yeah we not everyone has the the ducats to just throw around. So it's nice that you you're not going to you know have friends who just feel bad and are kind of out of the loop because they don't have the new console yeah. or maybe they're just not happy with you know maybe they expected halo or maybe you know maybe they got a billion dollars and there's like eh, that ain't really much of a reason i'm not really worried about you know grab because this is a leap like make no mistake this is a big leap especially to the 95 percent of you that are on the base box one but you know even on the x coming from that to the gears on the series x like Gears 5 on the, on the, on the One X is one of the best looking games of all time. Oh, and absolutely. still a noticeable jump on the Series X instantly. Um, especially when it comes to like the particles. And stuff. It really is like something you've never seen before unless you have a lot of you know, time with PC gaming. Pretty decent hardware. Yeah, it's, it, that is the most exciting thing for me is about this gen is is what the future looks like and what the future holds for for these consoles because yeah you'll see if you guys have dove in and read a lot of reviews kind of a lot of people say the same thing even our windows central review was talking about how you know out of the gate there aren't a lot of games to really push 
the capabilities of, of this console. We don't really know. We haven't seen anything with Xbox Velocity Architecture. We haven't really seen anything yet that has been fully developed for the kind of future of Xbox. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking to the team at Grounded, they are, I think Grounded is the first game that we've seen that actually uses the new uh, GDK from Xbox. Um, I think they they recently made that public, but that is one of the games that has been kind of future proofed in that sense, where they are building on the the next gen engine for ground. But it can also run on a refrigerator, you know, like yeah. some of those games that's meant to scale well. And but I, you know, I, I think the most next gen quote unquote game that we've seen uh, on anywhere is Hellblade, which wasn't even really running in real time, like quite like we'd like to see, like from a player perspective, and. Um, Man, like if they can really generate games that look like Hellblade running on Unreal Engine 5, that is, uh, I mean, as, good, as great as Gears looks right now, holy shit, I'm looking at this right now, like, uh, Hellblade is, uh, that's something different, Miles. That's something, Miles. that's something different, yeah, no, that's, that's a huge <laughs> point, like, it's kind of, it's a very interesting dynamic from when, where we first started the announcement of this gen, at the Game Awards, we got the reveal of the Xbox, and we saw this insane Hellblade 2 footage. It was just absolutely mind-blowing. Um, and then from there, it's kind of been um, this transition from a focus on what games will look like in the future to what your current games will look like when the Series X launches, which, I'm you know... taking a bath. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, splash around. Over here in the water taking a bath. But, we yeah. this footage on an RDX, by the way, so you guys can see... Uh... At least streamed at 1080p, because obviously, yeah. I might be able to stream for still. The bitrate would be too low. I should do justice, but yeah. <laughs> stream me and Miles is a uh, single player. Sorry, Miles. Go ahead. I get distracted by the water. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. You but... should be streaming my screen right now. The people want to see this screen. That's right. I know. I know. One, one day. One, one one to... Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Do we have the technology? Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Miles is in the next room, guys. So, what are you most looking forward to everyone else playing with the, with, with the launch of these consoles? You've been able to spend a couple weeks with it now. Like, what games, in your opinion, are going to take the most advantage of this hardware? Which games are going to look the best? What games do you want people to see so they can understand what this difference really looks like? Oh, man. Uh, well, it really depends because everyone's different. This is something I've always said. As fidelity has gotten so high with things like the Xbox One X, that if you have one, you in a way detract from, you rob yourself from a little bit of that experience. Uh, from the, you know, making that leap. It's still a big leap, don't get me wrong at all. Like, uh, not to mention the big games like Valhalla. It, literally things are being done that could never be done before on the One X, uh, on Series X, because Valhalla's running at 60 frames and that's just not possible on that older hardware. So CPU's too weak. You know, you know the story. I've explained it a billion times. But when it comes down to it, like, how do you define next generation? There are people that define it by the load times, which, yes, it is a massive leap. There are people that will define it by the ray tracing, which, yes, has never been done on consoles before this generation. There are people that will define it by the visual fidelity in terms of particles and all these different ambient occlusion settings and PC good settings coming to console. There are also people that define it by frame rate. There are people that define it by all these things combined. And uh, really, it's up to you what you're going to use to define your re reason to buy this thing. But I would say that, honestly, you're getting a, a PC experience right now on this thing. And there's no, it, it's, you know, we, all, we knew the X would be bottlenecked by the CPU. This is not the case here. And they're proving that. I've gotten multiple patches over the last day or so that, you know, these developers are running 60 plus frames. You know, they said, forget 60. We have enough, we have enough room now. We can do 120. You know, and, and when they're not using that performance for, for frames, they can use it for physics or anything else. Like, it's all about balance. So I'm, I'm fucking dragging ass right now. I'm just saying that, long story short, like, if you really wanted a good PC experience but not on a PC like me, then this is the box to do it. I think this generation is, is it's kind of that time. And these games already proven it, and I don't think a lot of people expected Ultra Plus settings on a game like Gears, Forza Horizon 4 looks nuts, like Sea of Thieves looks nuts, all these games run at 60 frames plus. Sea of Thieves looks really great at 60 frames, I showed some of it on my review. Um, you haven't seen it yet, Miles? Oh, obviously, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I need to check out that. 
montage. It looks amazing. It looks really awesome. Uh, chat, let us know what games you're looking forward to, but I, I would definitely say the Hala <laughs> is going to be one that pushes. It's going to push the system, right? Uh, because of the open world and the, and the uh, 60 FPS. And Gears 5 does push it as well. I feel like a lot of these do, especially from the first party. But ray tracing, last thing, ray tracing, you kind of have one option day one, and that's, that's Watch Dogs. Uh, and that looked impressive too, but, you know, I want that performance mode in that day. <laughs> That's what I'll wrap that up with, because it's dirty. I can't Ooh. do it no more than this. People are giving you some grief because they say you sound like you're in a bathtub right now. <laughs> I, I am in a bathtub. That, oh, there, oh, there we go. Let's let's tweak that mic a little bit. You're 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 fuzzing. My mic is right oh, here. Oh, okay. We're sounding good. We're sounding clean. Miles, there we go. The, hey, the room. bring me your mic. Well, there we go. We're we get we're hey, getting this, some this quality the, dealer uh, right now. Steel series, okay. Okay. Steel series X9. Blame it on that. Steel series X9. Thumbs down. Thumbs? No. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You're sounding good now. Yeah, we had some people in the okay. chat. We're like, "What's up with dealer's audio? Is he in a bathtub?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can hear, <laughs> and I am in a bathtub. Yes. Uh, Gaz says, "Dealer, can I collect my underwear, please? Left it at yours." Uh, I think you're thinking of Darge. I don't live over there, Gaz. Sorry. sorry there sorry. we go. But yeah, you can have it back. It's over here. Blondie but geeky, what's up? Thanks for joining us, everyone. We got 145 here. How we doing? Let's get to 5,000 concurrent. Let's go. Smash that, <laughs> smash that like button. Let's get hyped. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see those numbers again for a while. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, I love, I love the chat we have over on RDX. Dude, it's it's That's a fun, just, so fun crazy. group, hilarious group. Everyone over there is just having a good time in the chat. It's awesome to yeah. see. Hey, Miles, why don't you get over there and do some work? Stop making me do all the work. I'm over here just hey. shotgun only, like a true Gears player. Shotgun N only. Guns, any other how, gun doesn't even this matter. Is not in how this they game. envisioned it. They did not envision you on the ground dying. <laughs> yes, they did. That is a feature as intended. It's part of the scripted cutscene of this segment. I get downed There's repeatedly. So sparks. Oh, shit. How's the shoulder? It's actually pretty good. It's still sore. I'm a little restricted in my mobility still, um, but I officially get my sling off. I'm not what wearing it right now, but I officially get my sling off on uh, Wednesday, so the day after the Series X launch. Um, I displaced my collarbone, skateboarding. Um, skateboarding? So I just had a metal plate put in my shoulder a couple weeks ago, so that was a fun, fun little addition to this was year. It, was it worth it? You know, yes, it's the small price you pay to be a pro <laughs> skater, bro. A pro skater? Uh huh. Yeah. You're a pro skater? Sponsored by Fortnite. Can you sign my forehead? Yeah, what do you want me to say? Who do you want me to make it out to? Make it out to Colt Eastwood. Okay, cool. My beloved Colt. Are you trolling me, though? Are you really a pro skater? I'm not. I, I have, okay. I've skateboarded for like 15 years Why or so. Why you gotta lie to me like that, Miles? I'm not I'm a pro. I, I do it for the, just the thrill of the game, dog. All right. Well, let's get up here and see the thrill of the green grass. Ah, oh, yes. Glorious. So, yeah, I'll talk a little Jet, bit, of, I Jen guess, tried to lie to me. about the, uh, the Series S here. Um, <laughs> and just kind of put it simply, the Series S is not a console if you have a 1X. If you have a 1X and you're thinking of upgrading, there are some cool features that you will get with the One S, but if you really wanna take advantage of the backwards compatibility, at least right now, you don't even get the, the One X enhancements on the Series S. So, Miles, are you saying what I think you're saying right now? So I'm saying the Series S is a great companion console. It's, from my understanding, it's pretty much, pretty, Microsoft is, Kind of aiming this as the gateway Xbox console. I don't know if you're breaking up or if I'm breaking up. Oh no, my Terminator. Oh no, it's uh, happening. No. The takeovers. Is my voice still wacky? You're fine. Okay. I thought you were on a skateboard. Sorry. Oh yeah, Go sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the the Series S is a great companion console. It's a great gateway console into the Xbox ecosystem. But if you have a One X, especially, it's it's not a big jump. And you don't even get the same resolution improvements that you get on the One X. So, hang on, chat. Let me uh, let me correct Miles here. Okay, the one the the Series S Miles is a much better console than One X. It is a much better. Don't you get me know wrong. Why? Don't get me wrong. It is a oh, much shit. more. 
Frame rate performance driven console. Frame rate physics effects. It, it has basically almost the same settings as this is my Xbox Series X right now on the Xbox Series S. I'm not saying it's a bad console. Settings. That's not what I said. I'm saying as the, the people watching right now are obviously Xbox fans. They're invested in the, you know, the, the Xbox platform. My head's getting bashed in. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, hang on. Rip. Yeah, we're um, going to get killed. Okay, what just happened? Um, so I'm talking to people who are, are <laughs> Xbox fans right now. The okay. hardcore, yeah, they're going to get the $500 one for sure. Yeah, so if, if you're thinking, you know, like, hey, I have a 1X now, and, I'm, I, you know, 300 bucks is nice. You will get some great features. You will be able to play next-gen games. The Medium, for example, will not run on the 1X, but it will run on the Series S. And they have talked about how the main difference for them in terms of development is going to be just frame rate. Um, so that's going to be their, or not frame rate, but um, resolution is going to be the biggest mm -hmm. difference with that title specifically. Um, but if you want your, your existing library of titles to kind of carry forward and look better than they ever have, um, you're going to be you limited. Have a one X uh, today with a ton of one X patch games. So basically you're saying like, if you want all of your one X, your 2017 Xbox one X that can pat updates like the update to, uh, for instance, Red Dead 2, right? Which you might want, right? Exactly. Yeah, you might I, want that. I, it's a good yeah, option. You can only get that stuff on a system that has more physical RAM to actually hold those assets in. Now, it's not that 1S could not run that. It's just that developers would have to go back and leverage the memory multiplier system they have. Exactly. And they're not going to do that. So, <laughs> I mean, overall, I'm just saying that you're right. Through backwards compatibility, that's the one negative. And instead of 4K30 on some games, you're getting 1080p60 with way better settings and physics. I would take that any day, but that's really your preference. You know, it's really meant for people with 1080p TVs. Exactly, you know, For the yeah. most part, or, or a budget. And what, if that's you, then... What people should really deal. compare it to, in my opinion, is the value proposition of that compared to the Switch. Because you look at what $300 is getting you on the Series S compared to the Switch, and the mm -hmm. Switch is an amazing console. I love my Switch. Um, but from a performance standpoint, it's it's lacking in a ton of areas. So for 300 bucks, what you get with the Series S is insane. And if you're someone who has not previously invested into the Xbox ecosystem, 300 bucks Ooh. and then Game Pass is pretty much undeniable. Like if you really do love video games and you you want to experience Miles back up, you're gonna die. <laughs> I'm living on the edge, brother. <laughs> and you really want to experience, you know everything that all these ecosystems have to offer. It's, it's pretty hard to deny the value of the Series S. But if you are focused on backwards compatibility specifically, I cannot recommend it as the, the right choice. Yeah, if you have a bunch of X patch games, yeah, I get that for sure. Yeah. Um, but to be clear, you will still have all of your games that will run the Xbox One S version of those Correct, games. Correct, exactly. If you ever get an X in the future, then you'll have... The, you'll still... If you get the Series X in the future, you will get the One X version of those back and pack games. You will still... So yeah. it's not like you lose anything. No, yeah. It's just that, you know, maybe you want to upgrade to that later, or you can't do it now, or you can only find an S, which I can't find one of those things to save my life. I'm having yeah. one shipped uh, from the UK, you know, just to get one. Yeah, it's, one. it's... it's a, The value's insane. Uh, I missed a question yeah. here. Somebody was asking what what my dream acquisition would be for Xbox. And I guess I'll push that over to you first and then I'll, I'll drop mine. If you could pick, mm. if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and Xbox would get a studio, which, which, or yeah, a studio, a development studio, not so much a publisher. What would it be? Man. Uh, I mean, obviously CD Projekt Red is a natural choice. Oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, most people would probably choose that or a lot of people would. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah, stab him, stab him. Oh, yeah, come Ford here. X, oh, yeah. Ford X. Oh, yeah. Hey, come I'm a pro gamer here, bro. <laughs> pro so, so CD Projekt Red would be your, your, your yeah, number I'll, one. I'll leave it that, yeah, okay. Mine would be from software. If I could, if I could wave a magic wand and pick any, any team, it would be hey, you know. from software. Oh, holy crap. You should have saw that on my screen. Wow, so you get that cord and bring it over here and plug it in my Xbox. <sighs> All right, bro. We're give me your home. Let's post your home address in the chat, and then I'll come. Uh, right. I'll come drive over there. <laughs> I like that I can actually talk about this damn thing now. It's like weeks not being able to say anything. Exactly. I'm glad that everything's out in the open. There's what's been yeah. kind of cool about this 
like launch, dis, you know, despite the fact that there aren't, that we don't have Halo Infinite or anything to that caliber, is that, you know, we've had a ton of lead time. We've had a lot of time to experience and see what these consoles can do and ooh, ooh, holy crap. hear about, you know, people's experiences with this console. Um, a month lead time is insane. That's pretty much unprecedented for a console release. You have people like Tom Warren coming out and saying, like, I've never, ever had this much hands on ahead of time with a console. Which shows that Xbox is and super confident in the box. Uh huh. Because it's overheat. And scorched his <laughs> hand right off because the Series X is. If you've Batman. read our review, the Series X gets 1,000 degrees Celsius. Hotter than the sun. Uh, exactly. Hotter than the sun. Confirmed. You heard no, it here, yeah, folks. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, I mean, it's warm, obviously. It's not like when I say that, it's like common sense. Duh. Oh, God. Thanks for the warning, Miles. A grenade guy. Okay. Oh, oh come Miles, on. you're the worst teammate in the universe. <laughs> hey, I, I thought you could handle yourself, bro. I guess I, I was wrong. Was there. Look, that's, like, that's like me saying that right now. I think you could handle yourself. Miles. <laughs> Hold on, huh? All right, let's go up here, Miles. I thought you were supposed to be my wingman here. here. I'm going to put a baby leash on you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go, go. Uh, case by case basis, super chat hype. Let's go. What, if any, unannounced games could be surprise releases for Xbox next year? Outside Bugs of Halo next. Infinite and Starfield, Hellblade Two, something else not shown. You got any? You got any uh, predictions for unannounced games that are or announced games that are just gonna surprise not drop next year? Not after this year. No. 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 We after this year has been. <laughs> I haven't even bothered. Ooh, I heard so much stuff. Square. Ooh has come out and basically said that their development due to the, the complications of this year is affected until like 2024, which is, uh, you know, it kind of says a lot about a extreme. It, yeah, I don't think it'll be to that degree, but obviously it shows that some studios, especially the bigger ones, are, are having a hard time kind of adapting from the, the work from home model. If you're independent and you're smaller, it's kind of easier. You're a little more flexible. You're a little more agile. But for these big teams, um, especially Microsoft, like they are very traditional in how they develop and they've had to kind of take that idea and dismantle it and figure out how to make that work from home. And it's hard. It's really hard. Like I do pretty, I do all of our windows central re work remotely and that's just, that's just video stuff, but you know, doing interviews, getting footage, recording, streaming, all that, just doing that remote is tough. So taking a simple thing, like a simple tweak and then uploading it so people can watch it and review it. What would take, five minutes in office, you call your boss over, hey, check out this change I made. Okay, looks good. That now takes about six hours or a, yeah, or a then day. You then you can't play Valhalla while you're supposed to be working. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough to say that there's going to be any surprise releases for next year in particular because we got a lot of the games that were far along in development, didn't really see delays, but... You know, the games that were not far along, as we've seen, are getting a ton of delays right now. Holy crap. Darge Knight with the super chat. What's yeah, so Darge. question for dealer? Can I have my under what's the underwear gag? <laughs> why why, why, what's why you guys keep leaving your underwear over here? What are you doing? Yeah, what's what's going are the parties at dealers get really kinky? What's going on here? I mean, I, Darge uh doesn't even live in the same same country. I have no clue what he's even talking about, except for yeah, I got him. Come over. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's do. Come this. on, Miles. Let's get this get going here. Let's get her done. <clears throat> Ain't multiplayer, boy. You got to make progress. Hey, come on. I'm gonna throw you in the PvP, and then I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of grief here. <laughs> shotgun, <laughs> shotgun the game. Uh huh. All right. Here, I gotta put him on that. There you go, Jack. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Shwink. Fire rises. So case by case, this kind of brings up this point that Sony games don't seem to be having the same excuses when it comes to delays. Or at least that's what well, I assume. Because we here. have gotten zero release dates for them except for Spider-Man. And as I have kind of already talked about, um, the games that have been far along haven't really struggled as much with delays. When your game was basically yeah. finished going into like March of this year, which I can safely say that was the case for games like Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, that's why, you know, these games have been in development for years. They're not newer projects. Mm -hmm. um, the turnaround time on a game on average is three to four years. So it's safe to say that those were in development for quite some time before they were announced. Xbox is in the process of acquiring and developing new studios and developing new IPs. So they don't have the, you know, they don't have the lead time. 
their games have not been in development that long, and so it's going to be a, a bigger hurdle. And they're obviously working to correct their first party lineup, but I'm sure this year in particular has, is not going to speed that process up. So I think as Xbox fans, we might need to curb our <laughs> hopes and expectations for those new well, IPs. They just acquired a bunch of new studios. So that's that true. Mind. Yeah. That's... Machine Games released Wolfenstein 2 in 2017. And Wolfenstein Youngblood, I think, was a project they didn't really have most hands on with. I'm not sure. Either way, it wasn't nearly the project that they're working on now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect some of these games are probably a little closer than you think, but at the same time, they can afford to move these things around because of that. So you might just delay them and give them time anyway. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, Microsoft's business model right now is catered towards Game Pass. <laughs> so they're still going to be trying to give you something to be excited about every month. Um, the scale and scope of that's going to vary for sure, but there's going to be something in Game Pass pretty much every month not necessarily from first party Microsoft, but there's going to be something pretty much every month in Game Pass to look forward to. And now with, you know, the collaboration with EA Play, that's another way that they can kind of piggyback some of those Je announcements. Jedi comes over soon, right? Yeah, that's on launch day. Jedi that's, Fallen Order. That's an, that's an awesome game. 1080p yeah. performance mode in the settings on the yeah. uh, Series X. Let's, I mean, it's locked. Yeah, let's go. Much. It's it's buttery smooth. Oh yeah, kicking this guy right in the head. <laughs> you just, oh. kick that in the face? <laughs> just kicking that guy like, right in the face. What are you doing? You kick him in the face? Boy, it's rude, mm, boy. <laughs> 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 he just didn't know what to do. He's he like, I, this guy's kicking him in the face. Exactly. Yeah. He, <laughs> that's how you. That's how you shut it down. Some oh, kicks to the God. face. It's done. It's over. Uh, so Miles does it. When his collarbone's broken. You know, I gotta fight dirty. You know, I'm an arm down over here. I can't believe you broke your collarbone during a thumb wrestling match. I can't believe you told us that earlier. I know, dude. It's it, it was wild. It was like... Have you seen the movie Over the Top? That competitive arm wrestling movie? Don't compare it to that. We both know <laughs> thumb wrestling. It was like that, course. bro. It was that intense. Thumbs breaking off at the joint, just exploding. <laughs> the fracture was so extreme that it went from my thumb up my arm and just ruptured my, sh my collarbone. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Like you held an infinity, infinity stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, robot, go in there. Zeke Thanks. wants to know our thoughts on Avowed. Are you a big, are you a big Elder Scrolls guy? You a big first-person RPG guy? I got almost every single achievement in Skyrim and uh, Nerd. Witcher Three is my <laughs> probably my favorite game of all time, if not that God of War, one of those two. So, yeah. so are you? You're hyped for Avowed then? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. No. Did you play no, the? No, that the, doesn't mean I'm not hyped, but at the same time, um, you're uh, Luke, Obsidian are a substantially smaller team. Um, you're lukewarm right now, yeah. then. I am. I want to see gameplay, and I want it to be Outer Worlds. I don't think uh, was nearly as good as Fallout 4. Now, some people disagree, and that's fine. I think Fallout 4 was a, a much better game, though Outer Worlds did dialogue and, and consequence much better. Uh, but that that's all it did better, in my opinion. Uh, and every character had a mini sun behind one of their ears, you know, trying to simulate subsurface scattering. Other than that, you know, uh, yeah, oh, wow. I think Fallout 4 oh, was a better wow. game, and I think that uh, I'm ready for one of these big epic RPGs, and maybe Obsidian can give us that. Uh, <laughs> Hazardor says you're casual, bro. Hazardor's casual. He plays the he plays the dashboard more than anything. Oh my gosh. Hazardor. All right, I gotta catch up catch up on some questions here. So let me let me scroll through. Um, appreciate all the questions. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, Shout out to Cat Hazardor too. I hope he's doing better and feeling better after everything. Isn't, yeah, you know? isn't his surgery tomorrow? Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying mentally, he's got to get prepared. Got to, got to prepare. Gatorade and just and all D. the best wishes in the world to you, bro. Hope it's smooth. Mine. My surgery was smooth, so, you know, statistically, it's going to be easy breezy. <laughs> easy yeah. breezy. I like that logic. I like it. I, I, think I like go, it. Uh, oh, this way. All right. Yeah, um, audio should be good. It seems like most people are f audio levels are fine. <clears throat> um, you refresh the stream or see if it's muted yeah. if, you're, if you're not getting that in there. By the way, uh, I updated the A50s, right? Uh, oh, with that Astro A50. Right? Oh, yeah. With no, because there's no optical audio port in the back of the console. I actually forgot to mention this in my review. <gasps> it only took me 11 hours to build that review, so, you know, I wonder why. But I, I updated the A50s. Uh, Unacceptable, uh, dude. 
Where are you at, Miles? I'm waiting on this door to open, man. This door's hard. Any help? Sorry, I'm catching up. I'm trying to catch up on questions there here. There ain't no bro. Pokemon cards out there. Come on, you know, black <laughs> shit. Let's go. Um, so, uh, A50's updated them with the optical audio, and uh, now they work through USB, but there's a, there's a very noticeable sound hit. And, um, you know, I don't know. Hopefully they... Oh, so you're saying with fine, your Astros, fine, you've noticed that there's been a dip in the audio there's a, quality? There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a sound oh. hit because you're, you're no longer running off optical audio at the back of the Xbox. And yeah. if you run, if you use like eARC or AARC or whatever it's called, my sound my sound system uses uh, HDMI and all that stuff. Like uh, sometimes you can't route that optical audio through the back of your TV and keep it working, or maybe you just already using it. Point is that if you're not using optical audio on the back of the TV and you update your A50s to use the USB only. There's definitely a sound hit, like a quality hit to the sound. So, but they huh. do work. You know, Microsoft kept the word. They do work. But uh, yeah. yeah, they do work, which is, which is nice. But yeah, it is kind of a bummer that there's no optical audio for you know the audio purists because you know it does make a difference. USB audio, to your point, in some cases, depending on the kind of infrastructure of the device, can take a hit yeah. through USB. It's not as clean as optical audio. But I personally never used my optical audio on my one x at all and statistically microsoft has shown that that was kind of the, widely the case the optical was kind of like a fringe use so all right, well let's get rid of the oh the no back i'm getting beat down the, i'm getting let's get beat of, let's get rid of that view button because people use it less you know what I'm saying? yeah exactly let's do it Miles, we need to just have you run Microsoft. Feed it into the algorithm. Everything's an algorithm <laughs> now. And if it doesn't meet the algorithm's quota, destroy it. Well, right now your algorithm is dying on the floor. Hang on. You're just, oh, my God. You're just yeah, letting your boy get savaged over here. Just <laughs> Okay, thank you. Die. Okay, so case-by-case -case basis, super chat hype. Let's go. Example for worst case scenario for 2021. Starfield and Infinite get pushed to 2022. What does Xbox do? They have to have more in the chamber, right? According to homie Aaron Green Greenberg, who's a, a gangster talking about loading up the chamber with games, uh, that would be the assumption is that, you know, all the eggs are not in the Halo Infinite I basket. Think that was, I think that was referring to Bethesda. You, that, I, I, I think so, too. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, and I don't think Starfield's coming in 2021 at all. I hope most people don't think that either. They've pretty much said that it's not coming anytime soon. I know there's been talks that, you know, there's been leaks and stuff like that. So the, the speculation that it's coming in 2021 is kind of heightened, but no, 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 no. Uh, no, no, wee oui, wee. Oui. Game filter. Okay, Miles, you and Jez are awesome. Oh, that's, that's sweet. That that's so, that's so he's sweet. Been around here forever. He's game filter's a forever. legend. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Hits me up on Twitter a lot. Always have fun chatting with people. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm not missing any questions here. Got a moderate and game? What? You don't have any moderators? Man. We got we got Bonnie but Geeky, we got Hazador. We got some we got some dope mods hanging out. You know how the cutscenes in this game look better than the gameplay, right? You can tell they ramp up some settings, right? Yeah, they ramp up some settings. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh this game in, in real time shares those settings plus some, basically, is uh an easy way to explain it. I think they might do a certain lighting pass, uh, but yeah, I mean, it seems like all the quality is there in the cutscenes, and there's not much of a difference on Series X at all on, uh, between the cutscenes and the gameplay. That's that's that was kind of what the goal of this gen was. You because back in the day, back in PS1, PS2, OG Xbox era, there was a jarring difference between cutscenes and in-game, like ridiculously jarring, and you know, with modern games, they've been trying to bridge that gap. So there's kind of these these seamless transitions between quote unquote cutscenes, scripted events, and gameplay to make it more seamless or making the cutscenes in engine so it's it's not as jarring. You like you go back and play Resident Evil One and you look at the cutscenes and well now they're a little bit laughable. But back in the day the quality of those cutscenes compared to gameplay was so much better that you would go from this intense, like somewhat realistic in in game cinematic to just polygon face with some textures just stretched over it bro this this version of the game here like the cutscenes even run at 60 frames which is really cool which, yeah that was the biggest bummer Crap. like with this game is that everything was 60 but the cutscenes for the most part which was a little sad it was a noticeable concession i didn't mind too too much I yeah it was, it was you know neat how they what is ramped it up what's so the meat with right jez's here? goddamn filmic meme <laughs> right 
Mm, Cutscenes yeah. should be filmic, you know? Jismus um, Maximus. And Gears Tactics, they actually give you an option to lock the cutscenes to 30. Uh, they're at 30 by default, but when you start the game, it'll ask you if you want to raise them to 60. Well, that's kind of cool. It's, I'm, that's another thing I want to see with this gen, is more options across the board. Like, <clears throat> Give us the ability to have max fidelity, lower frame rate, or slightly low some concessions so we can get a lock 60 or a lock to 120 i'm telling you man like they i mean they can offer both you just got to take a slight hit on the resolution exactly yeah or i think this game in particular is kind of one of the best examples of how good dynamic resolution can be and how seamless dynamic resolution can be because when you're playing gears when you're experiencing this Unless you're freeze framing specific instances or specific moments, you're not really noticing when the resolution takes a hit. And as yeah. we go into this gen, that's going to be something that becomes less of a kind of deal breaker. Is it's not, it's not. I mean, dynamic resolution is a good thing. I think people have lost sight of this. Dynamic resolution is literally there to make sure that performance is maintained at all times while you really probably don't even notice it. Exactly. Because you're, you're, exactly. you're fighting, you're doing something. It's a great thing. There's a reason that they put this in every engine because people don't want to have to find a, spend an hour finding a specific fraction of a resolution that, for one, has you know 20 frames hovering, you know idling, doing nothing, or, oh my god, there's no frames, I'm losing frames now. Uh, they, they found the perfect solution. Make the game look as best it can at all times. It really is a good thing. But also, you know, this game is just not going to be optimized like Gear 6 is. No, not. yeah, this it wasn't, you know, it was built for the 1X. So it was built with the, the limitations of the 1X in mind. <clears throat> so the next Gears is going to be absolutely insane. The team at Coalition has proved that they are, they are wizards when it comes to understanding fundamental processes for optimization. Gears 5 is one of the best looking games even on one X because of how well it's optimized. There's so much happening behind the scenes that you don't notice because they have done such an amazing job crafting this game to make sure that you don't notice resolution dips or texture dips or anything like that. We got 182 hanging out. Thanks so much guys. Let's see if we can smash uh, up to 5,000. Let's see if <laughs> shout out to 182. Shout out to one of the chat. Yes, Hit yeah. the like button. Yes. Share it out for us. We do appreciate it. Subscribe to Miles. Give him a little Aww, subscribe. Oh yeah, we're we're almost at 20k, guys. Let's go. <laughs> no. Um, no, but seriously, thanks for hanging out on Saturday. We kind of the the time is you know we we cater to Jez's UK time for the most part, so I know it's it's early for some people. Um, so I'm I like, Miles hit me up. He's like, hey, I want to do a stream 6 a.m. your time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's like, come on, wake man. up. Gr grab back. some coffee. Let's go, boy. <sighs> up before that i'm good i know i saw you on twitter i was like before i was up i was like dang this boy's getting an early start let's go i'm usually up that, that's that's why i wish i could do rdx a little earlier we do that we do it at that time because we usually have to but we're probably gonna do rdx on monday this upcoming week for the launch um oh we are not probably yeah so if i could do it early in the day man i would i would be much better at what i do because i would want to live yeah you get a little but more I sleep still try to manage still try to manage um they're saying the audio is a little jank. Who's oh dealer's audio is janky, bro? What are you doing Rap. back there? What are you? I, yeah, I'm kicking these cords. Kicking these cords around. God damn. Maybe no. I could. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I could try to get the A50s back in here. Um, are you're just using like a USB mic or you? This is just... a pretty big cutscene, so let me uh, let me try to do that. Okay, I'll take some questions. Um, Miles, could you slash Windows Central or Dealer show some gameplay footage of Skyrim Remaster running on the Xbox Series X? There was noticeable lag when opening the menus on Xbox One X. When you say lag, do you mean load times, like delays in the game loading? Um, we can definitely take a peek. Um, I'll have to hit up Jez. I don't think I actually bought the Skyrim Remaster um, on Xbox One because I'd already bought it, I think, three times at that point on other platforms, <laughs> on PC, Xbox 360, and Switch. So I, I'll hit up Jez and see if he has the Skyrim Remaster because I don't. I just I can't bring myself to buy it again. <laughs> $180 is probably uh, my limit for Skyrim money. <laughs> Does Gears 5 have a photo mode? You know, I don't think Gears 5 does. They have talked about adding one because we, we did ask them a couple months back, just flat out, um, are you guys adding a photo mode to Gears 5? And they said it's something that they are working on. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know if there, if there has been any ETA on that, though, to be honest. How is console streaming from Series X to the phone? Um, I'll hit up I'll hit up dealer when he gets back and see if he's got any experience. I haven't tried Series X to the phone. I've done one X to the phone and I've from my experience, console streaming as of right now is a lot more um, responsive than X cloud streaming in terms of delay, especially if you have a dual band router. I would say across the board, you pretty much need a, a dual band router if you really want to have a good uh, low latency experience with X cloud. Um, I've tried the difference between uh, single band and dual band, and it's it's pretty much a double delay. Like it's it's that much of a difference in terms of uh, input delay when you're using single band versus dual band. Boo-doo. Boo-doo. Oh, these system sounds. I wonder if it's OBS, because I have my system sounds turned off, but, you know, I'm just keeping them in there for the spice. Bug Snacks is the game. Uh, Bug Snacks looks wild. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Is that better? Is that better? I had to, to me, no, but audience, is that better to you guys? What does it sound like? What do I need to do? Keep, keep talking. Tell me what I need to do, Miles. Keep talking. Give me a monologue about... Um... One day there was a boy named Miles. He decided to try to ride on a carrot. And he found out he, he couldn't ride on a carrot. And I can't say that joke. Basically, he broke his collarbone. Ah. Is that good? Fun story. Chat, let us know. what Before dealer or new dealer? <laughs> All right. Um, but I... It's going to be like a 30 second delay. Mm -mm. am i lower uh yes all good audio wise from someone here so that's good that's good uh, you good uh, someone says that's worse i'm uh, we're getting conflicting reports here steve we're getting <laughs> we're here? getting conflicting reports about audio quality on the stream dealer what are they saying uh, one person says it's better. Two people say it's better. One says it's worse. All right. Well, um, hey, percentages. Hey, exactly. It's it's a percentage game here. Um, so while you were gone, have you tried? I mean, if it's not loud enough. You can always turn me up when you're in, right? Exactly. Yeah, I can bump you up a little right. bit on my end here. Um, have you tried console streaming on the Series X yet? Somebody <laughs> was asking about that. No, I've got an iPhone, so it exploded. <gasps> Rip. Okay. Rip. I'll hit up Jez. I'm not That's sure if he has said, tried it know. either. He, had, he hasn't mentioned anything about it, but um, I, yeah, I, I haven't seen... A, I haven't actually heard anyone talk about the differences between Series X console streaming versus Xbox One X console streaming. So, uh, I'd imagine, just like everything else on Series X, I mean, it's yeah, going to be better. Exactly. You have a higher source quality to stream from, so I imagine those benefits will, will transfer over as well. All right, so we're in Beard's little lab. All right, I'm going to bump you up a little bit here just to make sure you're, <coughs> you're coming in nice and hot, hot and heavy. <coughs> oh, yeah, there we go. All right. Now we got to do this tutorial Shere crap. Khan, I like Xbox, but y'all are some Xbox to the core? That's a little harsh. Y'all ain't a word, sir. I, th I feel like we've been pretty cordial. I don't think we've said anything negative about PlayStation this hey, entire uh, time. Hang on. Just, just, all you got to do, Miles, is just ask him a question, and then he'll disappear, he'll lie, or he won't know. So, Shere Khan, <laughs> oh, no. what was said getting spicy in here. that upsets you? Yeah, I want to know. What, because we like Xbox, Was it when we talked Xbox? about how amazing this generation is going to be, or when we talked about, hey, Xbox, don't get really at the... The games that launch, but you know, hopefully it gets better. But there's some cool third parties. But I mean, uh, you're, I'm, I'm sure you're only here for five minutes, but just let us know. Hey, Miles, it's time to upgrade Jack. I don't want to. You got to. <laughs> I don't want. Sorry. I hate Jack. Okay, what do I? There we go. Cool. Y'all are some X bots. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, Sony was also asking, have you played the? Do you own the Skyrim remaster on Xbox One? Yes, have I you... could not go through it again because I had played played the original so hard, like I just couldn't do it. Have you booted Plus, it, it up on the long. Series X? 
Somebody was just asking no. if there's any. Okay. No, I have not. Yeah. There's no patch for it. Um, I do know Microsoft are working on some Bethesda patches, though. Yeah, I'm, I assume with, with this acquisition and with the Game Pass stuff, we're going to see a lot of cool optimizations launching in the Game Pass for some of the older Bethesda titles and, and the like. Yeah. I need to add a skip cutscene option or skip tutorial option. Da 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 da. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I mean, my experience with the XCloud has been pretty good. I would say on my mobile network, I, I only you got to stun them from behind cover. Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to sit here for like twenty minutes. I, doing this. I do. Yeah. This is my All favorite right, part right. of the game, actually. So got if we it. could savor it. If you could just let me yeah. enjoy my gaming experience. I'll use the share button on this controller. Think... <laughs> can, we talk, we, can we talk about the controller? Yeah, there's no embargo anymore for the controller. I mean, that's my way of politely uh, changing the subject. Oh, okay. Um, well, no, then no. The controller's amazing, Miles. Have you tried it? Uh, No, I have not. I have not tried what? it. What? Mm -hmm. You have not gone to the future, got one of these, and tried it? No. Nope. Nope. Uh, I'll tell you, like, the latency. I, I covered this in my review, but the latency is... uh. It's something I forgot about, right? They were bragging about this latency. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I forgot all about it. And while forgetting that it's even a thing, fired in my weapon in Battlefield 4, and I was running around. I was like, holy crap. It is instant, it's instantly noticeable, like how they've cut latency down on both the controller side and the box side. Yeah, it's that nice, that's man. been a huge selling point. And I was kind of skeptical as well when they were talking about the, you know, the dynamic latency and the low latency input. And I was curious to see what kind of difference that would actually make. I mean, we've seen numbers like the people, like, uh, the coalition has posted the differences for Gears 5 between 1X and Series X in terms of get latency. Em, em. Uh, and the differences between like how much frame rate affects the latency as well. Um, mm -hmm. so it's nice that they're delivering on that. And it's nice that that's something that's coming to existing controllers as well. Like you don't necessarily have to have the, um, the new, is it? Who uh, was telling me that the, even if you update them, they won't like the elite two will not receive the full latency thing. Has that been confirmed? Cause I feel like they've, I don't know. Publicly said there will be a firmware update that will. Well, they make... publicly said we have to have all of our enhanced games installed in the internal or the Seagate drive. And we don't. That's true. Which That's I covered true. that in my review as well. You don't have there's certain games you uh, you don't have to actually have installed on that that SSD. Um, and then there's others that we know for a fact don't use velocity and don't need a high speed storage, like little indie games that fit in the entirety. They fit in the RAM of the system. They don't even fit in the, not even in the SSD when you're playing it. Uh, don't need it, but you have to have it installed. So I think it's a checkbox that developers do, and they decide. Uh, based off they actually need it for one and secondly if they uh if they feel like their game is best played there i guess yeah that makes sense because we at this point there's not really but, anything that's even xbox that supports but marketing xbox though velocity architecture way off on this though you know um well gears doesn't but you still have to have it on the internal meanwhile sea of thieves doesn't and you don't have to have it on the internal well i mean you should because the load times on sea of thieves yeah. are pretty brutal not if you're using an ssd though the load times are about two seconds apart if you have an external ssd versus the internal ssd depends on what external ssd you have i guess i have a same five or an m.2 yeah so i have a, mine's only usb 3.0 but if you're running that external usb e, there is still it's drastic difference with sea of thieves specifically i, mean, I load into sea of thieves in like eight seconds but you're gone away. <laughs> no, I'm you. I'm just going to not pay attention. Um, what? Sorry. I'm just catching up on the chat here. Is there any auto storage management updates like game offloading? Like seen on the iOS or auto install backwards compat to an external drive? I don't uh, know if you have a filter so that to I've that seen, capacity. Have you seen a right. filter that lets you... Manage, the only uh, filter I've seen is make this the default install location. Yeah, yeah. But I, if you are using SSD, like SSD transfers are really quick. Like I got a two terabyte T5 and one terabyte T5, and I'm switching between those and the internal just to kind of test it. And uh, I wish my internet downloaded stuff that quick. It's quick. But if you got a mechanical, yeah, the mechanical will hold back the transfer process. Yeah, yeah. Unless you chant bug snacks three times. So do you have, what's your internet's download speed? It's supposed to be gigabit, but yeah. There, there's, they say that 
the Series X now actually supports that in terms of down. Have you tested to see if there's any difference between the download speed? There is a off? difference, yeah. Okay, cool. Because that's yeah. one major there's bottleneck I've noticed. Even with a hardwire connection on a gigabit for my One X, I don't get anywhere close to what my PC gets for download. Just know that when you're playing games, and uh, again, I'm just repeating a lot of my review, but when you're playing games, uh, you, will be, you will be throttled just like you are today on One X. And they do that because developers need to know, you know, how much bandwidth they have on that SSD when, they, yeah. when their game's running. You know, they, they can't have a guy with crazy internet sucking half the, uh, you know, one-fourth the bandwidth of the SSD down. It's just not practical. Any word on if Xbox is going to announce an acquisition in the next few days? Uh, I mean, there's always, at this point, there's rumors pretty much constantly of, of acquisitions and People are certain that you know, the day before they're the, announcing something. Yeah. The, they're yeah, they're announcing something for sure. In terms of acquisitions, I don't know. I can't say confidently. What I would love to see is Bloober. Um, that's been something I've been speculating for a while in terms really? of Bloober. Yeah. In terms of like legitimate, likely acquisitions based on their kind of yeah. history, track record, partnership. Um, and the fact that they publicly announced that they were selling earlier this year, which is something they legally need to do before an acquisition. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything that suggests for sure we'll see an acquisition. It's going to be very fan focused. Um, it's going to be pretty light and casual, though. So I'm kind of curbing my expect expectations for like big, big reveals. We might see some new trailers for for stuff that's been previously announced, but I'm not expecting any sort of like megaton kind of announcements, quite frankly. And then Sergeant Rake coming into just it's too soon, bro. Talking about the medium. <clears throat> He's like, you guys are forgetting the medium is coming out on December 10th. Oh, I'm not forgetting, got delayed, sir. That was the game I was most looking forward to playing this year. Above anything else. Above Cyberpunk. Above any other game. The medium was the one I was most looking forward to playing. And it got delayed. Yeah, and too, just because we don't mention something don't mean we forgot, you know. Um, but... We are glad you mentioned that because now we can talk about how the medium got delayed. Now, honestly, guys, you got to remember that this isn't... This is the same team that made Layers of Fear and, and you know, Blair Witch. And if they got their fans, but, uh, you know, it's not going to be uh, something crazy. You know, if you're, if you're looking forward to it, you're going to have fun. That's great. But it's not going to be the end all be all either way. I think that it's cool. I think I just wish they would make some bigger third party deals, I guess, because first party has almost nothing, right? So that's something Sony did do is they made that third party deal with um, Blue Point and they had them. Redo Demon Souls, and then they mm -hmm. made the deal I'm... with uh, Godfall, and you know that's still something. Two two games that are a little bit bigger, even though no one remembers what Godfall is right now. Apparently, it's coming to Xbox in six months. I don't know if that's true. I heard that I the the it. console exclusivity. Or it's because it's launching on console and PC at the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I did see that post that it's for six months. Why doesn't that look better than all the games if it's not cross gen, huh? Mm -hmm. Answer me that, all you cross-gen people that keep talking about that. It, they say uh, console exclusivity for six months, because after six months, it'll be dead. Zoom! <laughs> <laughs> Casket exclusive. Um, but no, yeah, yeah. But you bring up some good points. Like, there are some cool exclusive games on PlayStation for, at launch, which is cool. Well, yeah, and that's, one or two. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, Xbox didn't do the best job kind of managing in terms of, like, third-party partnerships and so, I mean, we got Yakuza kind of, sort of, but it launched on PlayStation 4 like a year, year ago. So that one's kind of a strange kind of, sort of, platform exclusive next gen thing. But again, that's not necessarily selling an Xbox to someone who doesn't own an Xbox or wasn't planning on buying an Xbox. And kind of same deal with the uh, Bloober, Bloober team, as much as I love them. I understand that horror is kind of a niche genre and you're probably not going to sell anyone a console with a bunch of horror games. Um, but yeah. I mean, the more the better. Um, I would have liked to have, you know, because people are, <laughs> you're buying a, a Series X for one reason or else you would just buy a Series X, right? Or, or uh, S, right? You're buying it for better the, graphics. The power. You're buying it for the power. And... I would have liked and anybody who's honest with themselves and a real fan 
would have spoken out and said, you know, I would like a little more to push the hardware. For instance, we haven't seen any ray tracing from fucking first party, but at the end of the day, like there, there's things going on. There's a common denominator. It's called Rona, and it's here to fuck shit up. So. Yeah, it's it's putting a, a wrench in a lot of plans. Um, yeah. Neil asks, is anyone at Win- Windows Central going to get a re- get to review the Bang and Olufsen headset? More than likely, yeah. I'm sure Jez is on that. Jez is kind of our, our resident headset guy. I just can't imagine what his room looks like. I imagine just under his bed, it's just this cascading waterfall of headsets. just headsets. Because, yeah, he's. <laughs> I think he reviewed like four or five headsets in the last two weeks. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll ping Jez specifically on that one. But that's that's one we have on our radar for sure. Um, super chat hype from Harpire Dons. You think devs need to filter multiplayer lobbies depending on display... F- refresh rate as they did with input 120 have an advantage um i don't know that they will just in terms of matchmaking what about an elite controller though i mean elite controller don't got an advantage you yeah got four uh, extra buttons because i know I you mean, can you can toggle you know keyboard and mouse versus controller for some games but i really don't think we're going to see a, a refresh rate filter um because i mean at this point some people are playing on you know displays that don't have 60 hertz we don't have a 30 hertz yeah. versus 60 hertz. A lot of hertz. people that do have great displays. They're playing not even in game mode, which cuts latency into a fraction. You know, uh, elite controllers literally make things possible that were impossible before. I mean, 120 is is nice, I guess, but I mean, honestly, <laughs> you still gotta rely on your skill, and I guess you can make the best players better. But an elite controller with anybody decent with it where you're able to do things and combinations of moves and throws and jumps and, and dives and, you know, prones where other people cannot even stand a chance because it's impossible in their controller. You know, that, I'd say that's a bigger advantage than 120 over something like 60 myself. Anyway, I'd never, I, ne- I will not play gears of war without an elite controller at this point. Like the, my brain cannot process it anymore because having basically the, the paddles on the back, I never have to take my thumbs off the sticks, which keeps me like in constant control of my character, especially for multiplayer stuff where it's a little more fast paced and competitive. Um, yeah, if you're not playing on mouse and keyboard or an elite controller, you do have a huge disadvantage. Like me and my friends joke about the uh, the crab claw that you have to do if you want to play gears <laughs> without an elite controller, where you basically have to like put your hand like this and like try to hold on to the bumper and A at the same time. Um, what so about yeah. headsets? I mean, I mean. <laughs> I'd, I'd said this a long time ago, and of course, a certain group of people took and just ran and mixed it out of context. But uh, I think I think headphones in PUBG is a massive advantage. I mean, the sound is so crazy in PUBG, you can hear people from a mile away walking. I think that's a bigger advantage than something like 60. Uh, if you had a guy with 60 with no headphones and a guy with headphones with no 60, right? Not that it's a practical example, but just yeah, my I mean, example. The headphones. Like, I mean, you can hear yeah, the they, guy coming around the corner. You have X-ray vision in a sense. Yeah. So there's a lot of semantics when it comes to who has an advantage over what, and really, exactly. it's it just it's down to what you want to use. Um, yeah, and there, there's no even playing field in any platform. I mean, it's just not PC's not that way. PlayStation's not that way anymore. I mean, Xbox, yeah, but they all have their own things. But to simply answer your question, no, I don't think we're going to see a 120 hertz um, matchmaking filter in any game. You don't think so? No. They don't have it on PC. Like People are not filtering no, refresh rates on people, P- PC. I don't think there's enough people that have access to 120 frames, honestly. It's, and, and even on TVs, I mean, still, that'll be an issue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's I mean, right now, yeah. like I'm in my office space, and I don't want a 60-inch TV that I'm going to sit like two feet from. So right now my, my, Oh, uh, my display does not support 4k 120 Hertz simply for the fact that there are literally, literally no monitors currently available that support HDMI 2.1. It's just, it doesn't exist. There's what is it? Yeah. I think the first ones come out this fall. Yeah. The first ones are supposed to come out before the end of 2020. And they're going to be very expensive. Um, we, I requested a review unit for, God, I Eve Spectrum. Eve Spectrum marketed itself as being the first monitor to support uh, <clears throat> HDMI 2.1, and they pa- basically have been using a, a marketing campaign that says, like, hey, we are the next-gen gaming console monitor, targeting Xbox Series X and PS5 specifically. So I've requested a review unit for those once those are 
produced and live. Um, cause I want to see what that is. I want to see what the quality is. Cause it's, they're saying it's going to be, I don't know, 700, 800 bucks for a 27 inch 4k, um, 120 Hertz yeah. display, which yeah. is at right now, as it stands, that's a steal because if you look at PC monitors that don't necessarily have HDMI 2.1, but support 4k 144 Hertz, you're looking at like two grand. Those are insanely expensive still. Yeah. And, and the reason you can't use those on console chat is because you need a, a, uh, Crap, I'm blanking on that damn connector. Display port connector, right? Or uh, display. You need display a, yeah, port. Dis- display port, yeah. Yeah, which is, uh, which is not on the back of the console, so you cannot connect it to that monitor. I was kind of hoping that Xbox would have a display port for the Series X, but alas. Yeah, I mean, they got really optical and the other HDMI because they are, I mean, they put so much power in this thing. Couldn't fit it, bro. Too much raw oh, no, power. It's just, it's just the money, you know. It's trying to save money. Exactly, yeah, and that's you know, it's it comes down to having features, having a powerful console, and then making it <clears throat> affordable. They could, if they had all the features, it would be not five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I get down there. Your bro is oh, stuck. Oh, oh no, get off me, Juby. Uh, I'm pretty disappointed that Rare mailed in the Sea of Thieves upgrades, frame rate and resolution only, no level of detail bumps or draw distance upgrade. Oh, I'm getting beat down. I'm getting beat down. Oh my god. I'm coming, come on, come on. I'm trying. No, no. Oh no. You 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 let me die, bro. You let why do you always have to die? It's a scripted scene. You're supposed to save me, bro. It looked really good though, didn't it? He died in glorious fashion. Yeah. And just blood everywhere. Did they did they confirm there's no bumps at all to the settings on Sea of Thieves? I don't know. They didn't mention if that, anything. If that's the case, I mean that game just looks amazing. Like I played it. Like it looks amazing on Series X. It looks it looks really good. Um also shout out 196, close to two hundred. Thanks for hanging out Woo! on a blessed Saturday. Um yeah, they haven't confirmed any uh texture upgrades or anything like that. Um have they confirmed anything about it? They have confirmed that it will be four K sixty on the Series X. Yes. I mean, they said that about a lot of games, but I mean, there's been settings increases on them. Um, so I'm hoping that that does include at least a, a draw distance upgrade because that I can tell you like playing it already like multiple times. You're not going to care. I mean, if it is not upgraded at all, I'm impressed. But uh, the frame rate alone is so huge in that game. Yeah, the frame rate is huge because I play I. That's one game in particular. I know I talked about earlier how I typically prefer console, but um, Sea of Thieves specifically is one that I exclusively started playing on PC because I could play it at 4K, like locked 60, with better draw distance. Because on One X, um, the draw distance is pretty bad. Like the, the the palm trees and the distance look really blocky. Like Nintendo's... Oh, I'm getting beat down. Uh, Nintendo 64 kind of style graphics. Um which is just, you know, a limitation of the hardware. They can only load in so much information. Um, but on PC, you don't have that same issue. So I'm hoping that that is kind of the Depending case. Depending on your, your VRAM limitation, what card are you using? Oh, I'm talking about the One X. Not, not, not. Yeah, not like PC. what card are you using on the PC where you. Oh, I'm using an that? RTX 2070. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That also, that's like the power of PS5, pretty much. Like that'll. And plus, you've got more RAM for games and that's where really the draw distance is going to sit is in your video memory mm-hmm. uh, yep. it makes sense but it makes uh, yeah sense. there's no reason they couldn't have done that on this thing if they didn't i, I guess uh that'd be weird maybe they and just if, said, eh. if it's not there immediately i'm sure it will be because as we've seen with this preview period um a lot of these updates are coming in hot they're coming in real yeah. real close to they the really launch are. like there were they literally really most of the games that they gave us codes for ahead of time, we could not test the upgrades because mm-hmm, they weren't same. they weren't available. So uh yeah. <laughs> when do y'all yeah, think we're gonna yeah. start getting limited edition consoles? Asks Mario M. Whenever there's a game, you know, with the hype to garner it, I guess. Yeah, I mean let's give me I mean if a Halo delay means a a Halo Series X. Poo! I'll drop an. I'll drop a cool five hundred on a, a limited edition Halo Series X. In a heartbeat. Yeah, they'll definitely do Halo. They give me a sea of thieves. I'll have Craig on one limited side, Master Chief on the other. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I don't know though. Probably not until next holiday. 
if we see any that soon. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, and yeah, sorry. Um, in regards to asking if Jez has reviewed the HS75, not sure. Not sure about that. But yes, if you head on over to windowscentral.com, we have a... What's uh, that? It is uh, a, a, a little media outlet where we cover a lot of Xbox and PC content. That's amazing. Some some has even some there. have even said it is the greatest greatest uh, media outlet of all time. I I know I, I don't think they said that, but I think they said it's the it's the best media outlet around or something. something Whatever I said. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take I it out. Of, I'm gonna are, take it out of context. Everything from the presentation no. to you know the, the guys that are putting the information together. Um, again, knowing what I've known about this console I'm on right now for so long, and <laughs> Windows Central is the only one who have been right there, you know, so... On the front lines of coverage, bro. Yeah. No, but seriously, Jez I appreciate the, that. I mean, Jez, Jez was is... the first one out after yeah. after the whole Power Target video. I mean, mm -hmm. Jez was an hour, hour later. Like, he had all this information. Like, he's on, he's definitely uh, tuned in. Oh, Blondie but Geeky dropping the reviews in here? Dang. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Yeah, Jez, Jez dives deep. He does. He does. He, he dives he does deep. He gets some good good information. Um, he's you know he's been in the Xbox community for eight years now, doing working for Windows Central at this point. Something or maybe not Windows Central specifically, but in the Xbox yeah. community. Um, so you know he's he's got some contacts. He's got some inside connects. He's got some. He knows George Foreman. He's got some bra trust resources. <laughs> <laughs> Some bro trust <laughs> And that's where I met Miles. Uh yeah. In the Subway restaurant. And we both Begging ordered the same <laughs> we both ordered the a six inch meatball with pepper jack, and the rest is history. <laughs> or we knew it, we woke up, passed out on the floor with marinara all over our face. <laughs> we were like, whoa. That's okay, what I call a Saturday night, bro. Yeah. Ah, bread. I remember bread. Oh, here we go. Ooh, ooh, juicy, ooh. juicy. Look at her. She's like, ah. yep, I'm a pimp. Neil, to your point about the uh, using your Xbox as a media center, um, also on Windows Central, not by Jez Corden, but by Zach Brown, he did a review specifically catered to, you know, the idea of the all-in-one media center. So his review was focused on, does the Xbox Series X replace okay. your Xbox One in terms of media features? And we we talked about this in our in our video review and our written review that. It it doesn't really. There are some limitations if you're trying to use it as a media center. No HDMI pass through. No optical audio out. No IR blaster. There's some media restrictions for sure. Um, that yeah. being said, it is way more game focused. It is a way better gaming device. But in terms of your all-in-one media center, it doesn't deliver this on the same vision as the Xbox One. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but if you bought it. For games, primarily, I mean, it's too good to miss out on, honestly. Yeah, the, the Series X is, like we talked about earlier, it is, it's a next-gen console. It's a legit oh, next-gen console. Biggest leap in the history of Biggest consoles. leap? Well, isn't, yeah, now that's... remember, visuals have diminishing returns. So you can only go HD once, right? You can only, it's just like Call of Duty, Gears of War 1, if you get online with your friends, like there's reasons we all have such fond memories of that. Like, oh man, gaming used to be so much better. It's like, no, we're jaded. Like we've been through, we, we went online, we went HD, we got party chat, like we experienced this stuff. And now, you know, we're just like, man, it's just not, it'll never do that again. You know, that'll never get that same that magical feeling. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're Miles and Jazz in a subway. <laughs> I thought it was me and you, bro. What happened? What happened to us? No, I changed the story. Changed what happened to us, bro? Hey, uh, Five Miles, minutes ago, we were sharing me strikes. Um, Salvo Guardians, bro? Yeah, you need to watch where you're dropping those. That was rude. You I'm almost so, killed hey, some you locusts. <laughs> Chat's cracking me up. 
Um, but yeah, Neil, so yeah, check that out on Windows Central. There is a review that is specifically catered for the Media Center stuff. Um, That's cool, though, that you guys did that. No one else probably did that, huh? You guys probably the only ones in the world who did that. That was our unique spin. That was, um, which was nice. It was cool to have that since we... Oh, crap. Three, oh, crap. three people on our UK team got... Uh, first time I've gone down. Oh, no, no, don't lie to me, bro. There's footage of it's you getting down. It's the first time I've gone There's down. There's footage of you going recording. down, yeah. Hey, T- t- Wait, so many times, no, okay, so so time time. Yeah, because you left me and you're like, I thought you saw him, even though you weren't even looking. Time stamp it, guys. I uh, no, I remember it. There were two. There were two. But the first one didn't count. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I respect it. Yeah. Everybody gets. Everybody gets a gimme. That's fine. Oh. We're just three days away until everyone has their Series X, unless you got an email saying it was delayed. <laughs> Why oh, you gotta rub that in? It's no, people. it breaks my heart because I've seen a bunch of people hit me up like my Series X was delayed. I've seen some people say How they won't get theirs until delayed? like December. Like one of my coworkers who pre-ordered from Walmart, her got her pre-order got delayed until December. I was like, no, no, oh, crap, big guys. <laughs> yeah, my PS5 uh, pre-order from Walmart got canceled. Oh, completely canceled, not even delayed. Oh yeah, they oh, wow. they went in for the people's elbow on me. Dang. What what game were you gonna play on PS5? Did you have one you were particular? Miles Morales. Okay, cool. And I don't need the PS5 to play it, but But know. it would have been nice. <laughs> I don't use the same dumb logic as a lot of people that say, You need this to play it. Like, what do you mean? You just like being forced to do everything? Jesus. Like you, somebody force you to drink water? Like I don't need a PS5 to play it, but I mean it's gonna look great. It's gonna look great. It's gonna run better. Yeah. This is why you buy a thirty eighty, right? 38 and all, like, got an exclusive game on it. You just want it to look better, and that's, you know, it's fine. Like, if you really are a diehard fan, and again, that's a cool option. I saw some people, like, basically trying to diminish Miles Morales as a game because it was cross gen, because they had bought into this idea. Like after that, they praised it, before they found out it was cross gen. Yeah, like, which is that, disappointing. Like, yeah. I don't like that people put this value into games that if more people can play it, then it's not as good of a game. Which is just yeah. It's annoying. Again, it's I mean, annoying. Like, it's not a healthy. It's very hard to explain to people, Miles, that the graphics scale and game design doesn't, and you got to define that for them. What is it? What do you mean? Well, you know how Batman flew really slow in Arkham City. Uh, you know he could dive and fly, but it was because they had a really slow storage solution, or, or the disk read speeds rather were, were way slower in hard drive. So you couldn't fly that fast. That's called game design. That's an example of hardware holding back the game design. How fast you can fly. Meanwhile, Arkham Knight, you went to an internal hard drive, much faster than disk read speeds. Arkham Knight, he was flying all over the place, right? A mm-hmm. little crazy, like. Uh, that's just, uh, again, another example of game design. That stuff gets held back. The things you, the mechanics, right? The gameplay stuff. But graphics, we've seen it over and over. Red Dead looks a lot better than Halo Infinite. It's not on any kind of next-gen console. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, Red Dead is a, a great example of just amazing graphics. there's a ton there's doom eternal metro exodus there's mm-hmm. a, so many games gears 5 the game we're playing right now looks, looks better than halo infinite to me yeah, i yeah. mean and some of that sorry, is the cross gen thing argument it's like people gotta stop because it's dumb it's got nothing to do with it we're on the same machine language now game design will get held back not graphics An- another thing that's going to be hard for people to kind of wrap their heads around going into next gen and like something that is going to be a legit next gen feature is Real-time dynamic lighting, because with 360 and previous generations to kind of compensate you for gotta kill this bouncer. Holy crap! For the limitations of lighting, they would bake lighting into textures, so you'd have places mm-hmm. where there was no light source, but on your texture or on your item there would be a light source. Because to make the object look better in this world, they just had to kind of fake it. Um, yeah, they do that. They do that now. Like this lighting up here. Look up. That's baked. Yeah, they exactly. Do, you know, to yeah. This day, they yeah. Do it. So I posted a side by side comparison of Miles Morales on PS5 versus PS4, and people were like, pitting me up saying, "Oh, the PS. I like the PS4 version better. I think the PS4 version looks better." And a lot of it comes down to understanding how the lighting works. Like if you take a still image, that's where Halo was getting ripped apart. Is they were taking still images. Halo Infinite was using dynamic real time lighting. 
Um, in the, in the mountains that were popping in and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, I mean there was it, that wasn't the only thing. Um, but like developers have gotten really good at faking lighting, right? So much so that even it's exaggerated and can look better in you know screenshots, but it's not as accurate. Exactly, and that's going to be a weird thing for people to see when they see side by side comparisons. Uh, with still images, it's, you know, it might look worse, quote unquote. Oh my God, we gotta kill this thing. In game, that is gonna give you a, a much more kind of immersive dynamic experience. Um, mm -hmm. And it's gonna allow, you know, more flexibility with particle effects and textures and lighting and reflections. Because if you're baking everything in, you don't you don't get to play with reflections, like and outside of water and basic surfaces. But if you're baking all the lighting into your textures already, the reflections don't do anything. But if you have a shiny piece of metal as your kind of source for this light, you're going to see a lot of cool reflections and a lot of cool like dynamic features that will really be quote unquote next gen. Um, yeah, that's kind of what SSR is. Uh, screen space reflections is uh, it's just data that's already used there from the screen, replicated as a reflection, but not dynamic, meaning, you know. Yeah, yes, you won't see exactly. people walking uh, against the building in a reflection somewhere. That's where ray tracing comes in mm -hmm. and changes that. And with Miles Morales, uh, ray tracing is exclusive to the 30 mode. Mm -hmm. It is um, exclusive to the 30 mode, yeah, which is, again, but, people... Uh, it, it's impressive, and it, yeah. it sucks that I'll never use it because uh, it's in the 30 it, mode. It, that's, where I, that's why I'm kind of torn with this whole next gen is I... <sighs> I want 60. I want 60 consistently. And if that means I have to turn off ray tracing, I probably will. It'll be like when I first got my 3DS and I um, would turn the 3D feature on for like the first five minutes I played a game and then immediately turn it off. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do with all these games that come out with ray tracing modes that are 4K 30. I'm going to turn it on, be like, oh man, this looks amazing. And then go back to 60 <laughs> FPS. <laughs> By the way, people uh, with the headset stuff, Miles is on PC, and I, or did you just join the audio on PC? I don't know, like, uh, I think Miles is using the PC app to talk, and I'm on the Xbox Party chat, right? Is that what's going That's on? That's correct, yeah. So I'm basically so using the PC Xbox Party chat to run run the audio here. You're lucky that hasn't even crashed yet, honestly. <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been running like a dream so far. Um I'm seeing some pre-order stress in the chat for people who were uh, struggling to get the Series X, and that was a that was a spicy mm. morning. I it took me about 25 minutes of just <laughs> smash and refresh on the uh, that Microsoft Store to get that to go through, but made it happen. We had a, a group call. I think of it was me and five other of my close friends who were all trying to get one. We were all in the chat together, just in the trenches, smash and refresh. And it was like going one by one. Somebody <laughs> got an Xbox. Were like, Her oh my were god! Bleeding. I didn't get an Xbox. And then, <laughs> you know, fifteen minutes go by. <clears throat> hope starts dwindling. We feel like, uh oh, it's over. We're not getting it. We're just not getting an Xbox. That's it. But you know, hope well, beyond Aaron, hope. Uh, as you know, we had Aaron on on my show oh, yeah. and he did oh, yeah. say he commented on this uh greenberg he said uh that we've talked to retailers and most of them mo almost all of them or most of them have not sold through their launch day stock meaning they kept some in stock didn't didn't let them up for pre-order so uh so you might be able to actually get one the midnight the console comes out or the day the console comes out if you go into the store yeah they are basically some retailers will not be selling the console's on launch day because of the whole the COVID situation. They don't want people lining up yeah. is the big thing. So you'll really have to pay attention. to the re I know Walmart and GameStop specifically are going to have <clears throat> units in stores and available. Uh, limited. I've seen people who work at Walmart posting like something to the effect of like 10 to 14 per store, like available in store. Um, but there are retailers who are not going to carry it because they don't want you lining up. Shout out to Obi Wan as well. There's a jack upgrade in there, by the way. Oh. I don't know if Lupa's still in the chat. Shout out to her. Lethal. I don't know if you've seen Lethal in there. I can't see the chat, but any of those guys here, I gotta give them a special shout give, out. Give the special shout outs. We got yeah, we got a yeah. good, good crew hanging out. That's to do it. So let's let's talk about let's talk about the future of Xbox <clears throat> Dealer. Let's talk about our hopes and dreams for. <laughs> Microsoft, because one thing that we talked about in our review of the Series X was the Series X is a console that is looking towards the future. It is it is the launch of next gen. But right now, for the most part, 
next gen isn't really upon <coughs> us in terms of the games and the gameplay and the features. So what do you want to see? What do you need to see from Xbox in terms of the, um, let's say within the next two years, what do you need to see from Xbox? This is why I bring up the same machine language, right? And to people that don't pay attention to exactly what I'm saying, it might sound like, you know, I'm <laughs> saying something I'm not. But for the first time ever, you are running from an x86 machine language console, like PC, the Xbox One, PS4. This is why they made them x86, because of porting and, you know, it's so much easier to make things work, apps and all this other stuff works, it comes across. And you're, you're coming over to another x86 PC machine language console like the Series X and the PS5, right? This is the first time in history that we've done this, from x86 to x86, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And because of this, they're not going to have some crazy thing where you're going from power PC or cell architecture to this other thing that, you know, whoa, everything scales down from PC, and look at Rise, Sun, of Rome. You know, it's just different. Plus, with the different, the, the levels of fidelity that we've hit, with this generation, because of their ability to bring settings down from the PC so easily and stuff, it's just not apples to apples, in my opinion. It's not. But I think it will benefit in the long run, because you're already seeing it now. All these features they already have built for PC are built from the ground up to be brought down to their Series X and even Series S. You are reaping the benefits of PC settings that they've already made for a higher class or higher tier system. And that does include ray tracing. You'll you'll get <laughs> benefits for for graphic from from graphics cards that are way more expensive than a Series S or X, depending on you know the setting. So I think it's a good thing overall. I think that the compatibility is the best thing. I think it's going to make games easier to make and and bring over. Uh, and honestly, I just I'm harping on this because I, I just think people really need to think about it because it is true. And that's why things just haven't been kind of like you say the next gen games aren't here. But I mean, at the end of the day, like you're getting games that are scaling down from the PC, like for now on. That's what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And you're getting them at this kind of performance that I'm looking at now, at this kind of fidelity. And software is going to catch up to the hardware and make the games even better looking because what happens? It takes two years for these games to, to really, I mean, it's going to be two years from now for you get games that were built from the beginning with this thing in mind, I would say. Absolutely, And that's, yeah. just, that's just how development works. It's nothing to do with cross-gen or anything else. Um, so again, imagine you get Red Dead 2 at the beginning of this gen. Your, your face would explode, you know? <laughs> no way, right? No way, no way, yeah. It'd be what? nuts. I'm just saying things are different now with, with PC stuff and x86 coming to, over to console and all that it's just a little bit different and i think people uh are gonna be blown away when they see like a, a really amazing looking gaming pc uh underneath their entertainment center that is dead silent and uh is a console and has this kind of capability uh the games aren't here though yeah that's the thing we kind of gotta harp on i guess and that's a great point, because we can say what we want about the Xbox One in terms of, you know, performance and specs at launch and, you know, the history of the Xbox One. But one thing that Xbox did incredibly well and it was incredibly smart was using x86 and making sure that the infrastructure that they built on Xbox One was something that they could carry on into the future. So that's yep. why backwards compatibility on Xbox Series X was so easy because the transition wasn't nearly as rough going from Xbox to Xbox 360 to Xbox One. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you don't got to rebuild stuff now, on the ground. Yeah, it, but yeah, to your point, very very much like PC, very much like using sliders on a PC to adjust different the quality features and stuff like that. You use all the same APIs, you can use DirectX ray, ray tracing, it all runs on the same machine language. It's all very important yeah, to the overall key of scalability and flexibility. I would and that's say. why compatibility is... Microsoft has a huge advantage there over PS5 specifically, whereas PS5, yeah. you know, they got pressure and so they had to kind of make it work. And so thankfully, because of that pressure, they did make it work and you get to play all your PS4 games on the PS5. But um, it doesn't seem as kind of universal as, hey, boot up this game. And if there were features in terms of like resolution or frame rate caps that it will just look and play a lot better. It doesn't seem like that. Yeah, some of them have warning symbols like, hey, this game will not perform like it should. Like basically saying like 
something's going to happen at some point when you play this game where it's not going to be playable, probably. Yeah, and it's, it's kind that. of, yeah, I've seen stuff to that effect where people, yeah, they're basically saying like, digital hey. Digital Foundry covered it yesterday, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah, that Digital Foundry video is really interesting. They're, they're, they're side-by-side comparisons of back, back compat. And, you know, it's what a lot of people within the Xbox space <clears> have been talking about for a while. It's, you know, the PS5 fundamentally was not really built for backwards, with backwards compatibility in mind. And so now they're just, they're trying to catch up. Um, Mary in the Mad, what's up? Well, still a few yeah, other people joining. Me. Emmanuel, welcome. Thanks for hanging out on this spine Saturday. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Yeah, boy. <laughs> Mario says just 4,800 more people. Yeah, now we're talking. Mario, my, my main hype man in here. Oh, he also asked what, what your favorite Halloween candy is because he was saying that my responses for our, uh, our Halloween episode were unsatisfactory. I don't really eat candy. <laughs> There we go. That's the healthy, healthy response. Oh, no, this is my response. <laughs> we had to. No, I really don't. I don't eat candy. I mean, I guess if I was going to, I mean, you can't go wrong with Reese's. I guess. I mean, classic choice. Classic. Uh, but you know, that's a cop. Whoever made that, that's a cop out candy. Like, oh no, oh why? I would never predict your peanut butter and chocolate was good together. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But yeah, probably that. Um. <clears throat> Whack. Miles, save me. Where are you at? Are you down? Oh, I'm not down. I'm not oh. here. <laughs> oh, throwing shit. Here, Miles, I'll help you. I'm throwing you into some PvP after this, bro. <laughs> we Dude, it's wor- it's, what's worse, though? Going down in the campaign or PvP? <laughs> I'm I'm just in autopilot mode for the campaign. Come on, here. come I'm on, just, Bob. I'm, I'm, just, throwing, I'm, I'm throwing shade here. You're throwing shade here. It hurts. Yeah. Okay, I'm a real Put gamer. You're hurting my gamer. Card. He said I'm a real gamer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Miles is a good sport yet. All about we having fun. RDX all the it's, time. Okay, it just yeah. bleeds through. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, like I said, this is yeah. a little more Ooh, intimate. Shut the off. A little more intimate in here. All right. Oh, have I hit my 45? I don't think I've said intimate 45 times yet. So I'll, I got to start sp- sprinkling those in just randomly here and there. So yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, if you're if if you haven't stopped by before, we were streaming pretty much every Saturday. Um, we might change the time. Like I said, we we stream early, typically to cater to Jez's UK schedule. Um, but we might start mixing it up a little bit. For the most part, it's been 9 a.m. Pacific time which that's kind of where all my friends live. So most of my uh, friends aren't tuning in because it's early as hell for them. Uh, <laughs> but 9 I am. I know they're, they're, you know, it's Saturday. You got to let the people sleep in. Miles is ahead of the curve. He's up at seven. That's right. I'm uh, up at the crack of seven. <laughs> up at the crack of my call. An- seven. <clears throat> Anthony says one V one me on gridlock. Okay, bro. Bro, do Anthony's, I need to send you an invite and embarrass Anthony's embarrass you on live stream? Battle to the death. I think you forget who's who's often the MVP when we're playing, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah, uh, take it <sighs> easy on Miles. You know he's got a, a messed up <sighs> shoulder and whatnot. Yeah, even one armed, I'll smash you in game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, seriously. Thanks to everyone who's hanging <laughs> out. If you want to, if you want to support us. Just liking and subcri- subscribing is the biggest thing you can do right now. We are uh, we're getting close to 20k, which I talked about 20K. this earlier on in oh, the stream. Crap. And um, we started this year with like 2,650 ish subs back in January, and we are um, pretty much at 19k right now. So it's it's been an awesome year. Um, the lead up to you know the Series <laughs> X has been great for us because we've had a lot of a lot of coverage we've been doing. I've been uh, grinding away on some videos, um, laying down the old dulcet tones on the microphone, busting out gamer ASMR. We've been all over, you know. <laughs> We've been out here doing. That's it. your secret, huh? Yeah. ASMR. That's that's how we got 15k subs. Was that one video? That's nice. How did that video do? Terribly, but. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think most people knew it was a joke, which is <laughs> so because people yeah. hit me up and they're like. What is this? Like, I don't know, Miles. I mean, I'm trying to get into this, but I mean, it's like, really hard. I don't really like ASMR. I'm like, it's two minutes. Just watch till the end. It's, I, it's just a joke. People are like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I'm like, you should be. 
I wanted to make you uncomfortable. Have special ways, Miles. Oh, jeez. Why do you? What well, gave you the idea to do that, though? We had this You're joke like, eh. a while back, Jez and I, when we were doing a lot of like meme kind of social content, and it was um. Rod Rod Ferguson came out, and he was basically okay. doing gamer ASMR to like hype up Gears Five. There was like this period in time where a lot of people were doing weird ASMR advertising. So I told Jez, I'm like, dude, let's let's do a gamer ASMR vid where I just drink Mountain Dew and eat Doritos and ASMR. And he's like, do it. I don't care. Go for it. Go wild. Go crazy. And so we sat on the idea for like a month or two. And I was like, and then just one day I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. I know we joked about this. And I sent it over like to Jez. Slow news week. Let's do it. Yeah. And Jez is like, dude, this is perfect. Post it. And I was like, all right, let's, let's see what happens. So, what kind of responses? You got some weird DMs after that, or what? Uh, surprisingly, no weird DMs. You know, wow. I was kind of expecting some kind weird DMs, but... Yeah, well, I mean, you should feel a little insulted right well, I now. I guess it wasn't hot and heavy enough. I don't know. I, I didn't know, lay wow. it on thick enough. Should have had Jez do it. Jez. That'd have worked. That, that UK. UK. Yes, Courting. <laughs> Jeez. Is that I, what miss, I miss you. I miss you. That's where... Yeah, I know. I was hoping he could hang out, but yeah, he's he works a lot. We all do, so he's trying to, you know, take some more time for himself when he can, which is important because that man is of course working of course. way too hard way too often. So yeah. Yes goes hard. He needs oh, to get himself on a sleep schedule of some kind. That's that's oh, for no. sure. Okay, Ooh, my dude. grenade somehow did oh, I'm not coming. Go over I'm the coming, cover. bro. Right. But yeah. Well, I'm gonna throw this over here. Xbox launch hype, we're, we are, what, three days away from most people getting their console. So most people who ordered get in their console in just a few days. And that's awesome. That's, there's just that special feeling going into a new gen. Like, it only happens once every, like, seven to ten years for the most part. And it's just fun. It's, it's, a, it's a time where we should all be excited and having a good time about gaming. Um, yeah. And yeah. for the most part, that's the case. I can't wait to try, like... 2K21, I mean, 2K21 in current gen is the first basketball game I've ever actually, like, bought and played. And I'm like, ah, hey, this is kind of fun. Uh, I like the tall one, right? And then I saw the trailer for 2K21, the next gen version, like, oh, you know. Oh, my God. Really, yeah. It's like, wow, you guys really did exactly what you had to do with the heart. Like, you could tell they're using the CPU. They got all these extra audience guys and all, all over the court and the animations and it looks smooth, man. I hope it's bug free, though. I really it, yeah, hope it's bug yeah. free because it looks great. And a lot of the pre I watched some previews. I'm not a big basketball guy. I'm not a sports game player. Um, but a lot of people are talking about how insane 2K21 looks in terms of like a next gen showcase. Um, so, uh, there's been people who have said this is the best looking like net game on Xbox Series X or PS5, and it does look absolutely incredible. It is a basketball game, so yeah, they can put all that rendering right into a little mm -hmm. it's a tight, rectangle. Yeah, it's a tight space. Exactly. Yeah, tight space. But, yeah, it looks great. not a lot of physics or explosions going on, so they can really ramp up those graphics. Power your dreams, yeah, no, Lupa. Bouncer, no. Oh, oh. There we go. Shotgun. Stupid pouncer, man. These things are so annoying. And they don't look anything like the rest of the swarm at all. It's like, what are you related to? What? Yeah, what? Are, that's. I'm a big Gears nerd. I love Gears. Yeah, but... and it just doesn't. Like it's not so, cohesive. Some of the monsters are they look awesome. And some and you know, for the most part I can just be like, hey, that look, <clears> that monster looks awesome. I'm gonna ignore its origin or how it was created. It looked like or why it, it exists. Like it came from a different planet. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna ignore that because it looks cool. But I that is a legit criticism of the swarm. It's like, where did this how did this exist? Well, they turned into crystals and they woke up and now these exist. All right, cool. <gasps> I think no. they did an excellent job explaining the human queen and stuff in this game. Like this, this game doesn't get enough credit for how it's so all the stories together over the fifteen years or ten years. You know, like uh, they really actually didn't force it, and it makes sense. And 
it explains it a lot in this game. I don't yeah. know how many times you beat the story, but yeah, I mean, I've played through this campaign good. about three times. Like I was so stoked yeah. to see like characters and moments from like years two, for example, like, like seeing these characters you haven't seen in 10 years plus and you're like, Oh yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about this whole like arc. And they're incorporating that into this new like timeline. And yeah, from a storytelling perspective, this is one of the best, Gears of War games in terms of setting. I think it's the best story, honestly. Yeah, setting up a great uh, campaign, setting up a great future for the series. They did an amazing job with Gears Five. Uh, where did I get some ammo from, man? Get some ammo. Michael Swar- is Sword. Am I saying that right? Swartz is not getting his Series oh. X until December. What happened? Who hurt you? Was it Walmart? Oz took it from you, didn't he? Was it Walmart? Did they do this? <laughs> Walmart did it, didn't they? Damn Let's form you. a coalition against Walmart. Sam Stop Walton canceling our pre-orders. Uh, oh no, no, no! Oh, he's he's got you. Oh, he's eating me. I'm in the belly. Ooh. Boom! Boom! There we Don't go. Don't say I never did nothing for you. <laughs> Any chances of a special edition podcast for launch day? Are you doing anything launch day? Mon- podcast Monday, wise? Yeah. Monday? Okay. Yeah. Monday, so, Monday, Monday. Monday. RDX. Are you okay? So you're you're taking Tuesday off to enjoy the console launch experience then? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, that's why I haven't been putting out more oh, videos yeah. because I do this because I play games, you know? <laughs> yeah. You want to savor that experience. <sighs> I'm I'm planning on not working at all on Tuesday. I want to just yeah. dive in. I got a couple reviews for some of the games I'm working on, but I just want to have at least a day to just take in the next gen experience. Open the box, hook it up, um, spend about two hours transferring everything over from my SSD external <laughs> into the internal, and then play some <laughs> games. Um, well, I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, it won't take anywhere near that long if you're transferring only the next gen games right? oh yeah yeah no i mean i have but, a 500 uh, gig ssd external that i've i've packed. oh you got to go back and forth i've, uh, I've packed it to the brim so i'm transferring i'm keeping some of the back and pat stuff on there but there's a few games yeah. i'm i'm transferring gears 5 sea of thieves a few others as well um, you don't gotta transfer sea of thieves just leave it on the external oh that's true and that's 60 gigs you saved there so I, you, I mean, you will feel. I think I mean, they got Duty, it down to Cold War is 125, 28 gigs. gigs on Series X for Sea of Thieves, and then 17 for Series S. So it's, that was one of the first examples of them like shrinking the size of one of their games on Series S. Because I know I don't that's think it's that size currently, though. I'd have to check. Uh, they announced it. Well, they shrunk it down yeah. recently, but they Here, did. I'll, I'll check. Yeah, double check. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure 28 and 17 are the official figures now. <laughs> That's impressive. I like that. I like. I like. That's nice. Oh, I no, like it. Ant. No retailer here in nope. Sweden. Oh, okay, so you're in Sweden. Um, you'll get the S, but not the X. Okay. Well, you have the S. You'll have forty six gigs. Forty six. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they'll update it. Yeah, because they posted about that on Twitter recently, today maybe even or yesterday. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably update it. And then David York, F's for David York, has not been able to secure a Series S or X yet. Um, yeah, the S has been just as hard to find yeah, over the, here. Yeah, the S is, it's going quick. It's cheap. It's, yeah, at 300, that's what, as Nintendo has learned, that's kind of the sweet spot. 250 to 300 bucks and you'll sell consoles. Um, well, yeah, and, and their S is there. Uh, this, you know, since 2016, they know, they know exactly what that thing needs to be at. I think it's a phenomenal value for three hundred dollars. I mean, Ori, the X, the Xbox One X couldn't even hold sixty frames on Ori. The Series yeah. S is doing one hundred and twenty frames. Yeah. So, I mean, really, you got to think about the the balance and the settings you're getting. Like they already said, you're getting pretty much the same settings on Gears, but but on your Series S, you're you're just getting a lower res. Yeah, and that's um, huge. That's that's impressive. It's, it's a very very capable console. It's just meant for people with lower resolution displays or budget that they really 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 uh, care a lot about. So. Because, yeah, you have the Xbox. It's a cool little console. One X, which is for a while was the world's most powerful console. And, yeah, 
you can't hit 60 FPS on most games, and then now you have the Series S coming out of the gate hitting 120 yeah. FPS on most games. So it's is it CPU. It's just it's uh, insane. Letting the GPU run. Letting the GPU run. You know how many times I've explained that four teraflop number is like, yeah, it's a different gaming focused architecture. Again, think of it as more frames, pixels, and effects per teraflop. If you want to think about it that way, like it's uh, not actually weaker. It's just, that's yeah. That's that's kind of Microsoft's a different fault. Display. That was Microsoft's fault when they're advertising the Xbox One X having six teraflops. Um, yeah, but you know what do you do? Exactly. Right? You just yeah, it's complicated. Teraflops is a complicated term. It's. It's probably not it's, the yeah, best I mean, way to market. It's very simple. It's got a definition. It's the amount of calculations per second you, a chip can do. Oh, and yeah, yeah. certain ga- certain chips render games better than others. And with this new Navi RDNA 2 focused architecture, it's a massive leap. RDNA in general, RDNA 1 was a massive leap over GCN. Uh, so yeah, they're much better at gaming. So per teraflop, that's why the gap is bigger and people it's, still don't understand that mm-hmm. because it's, it's about two teraflops. But this two teraflops is capable of a lot more than the X versus the Pro teraflops, plus the ray tracing, plus the high, you know, the CPU clock, plus the 100 plus gigs of memory bandwidth. You know, there's a lot that people don't understand. And when developers really leverage this stuff and go all out on ray tracing at the same time, they'll see a, a, a very noticeable delta. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really facts, excited dude. to see the the super nerdy deep dives from Digital Foundry, like comparing yep. side by sides. Like as we saw with the last gen, that was a huge point of contention for a lot of players on both both I think day two. one you'll get you know yeah you'll see a bunch s- of games it'll be okay we got to run them you know run us around you know whatever but yeah over time you'll see a mat you'll see bigger and bigger delta yeah because they're you know still learning this like i said grounded is the only game we've seen so far that even uses the new xbox <clears> dev <throat> kit. so we haven't for the most yeah, part we haven't seen just any games outside of grounded that use the new dev kit and are using some of these new features so mm-hmm. um we're getting When's that co- come when's that update come because that's not um out they said they said early November. So I interviewed the game director. And so there's going to be two updates coming. Um, there's supposed to be a launch day update. So on November 10th, uh, you'll just get a, a texture upgrade, a performance upgrade. So it'll be 4K 60 on the Series X and 1440p 60 or no, sorry, 1080p 60 on the Series S. Um, but that will yeah. include better draw distance, better texture quality, better lighting as well on both. Yeah, on both For $300 platforms. console like the X today can't hold even get to 60 consistently at all on that mm-hmm. game yeah so uh and that's that's kind of you know that sucks it's so that's going to be huge and then earlier on they haven't set a date it's going to be around launch but i think they're finalizing it is the uh the koi update the pond update which will add a bunch of new content and then they said from there they're about 60 percent of the way towards what they would consider quote-unquote act one of grounded which will probably end up being what is 1.0 of grounded and then they're going to add additional kind mm. of chapters to the story um i'm a big survival game nerd so i mean they got a feeling the story that's there right didn't they kind of cut that off yeah so there's only bits and pieces of story so they said after the the koi pond update releases it will have new story bits it will have new areas it'll have a new dungeon um, they'll be about 60% of the way complete with the content of Act 1. So there is still a bit of storytelling that's not in it and won't be in it for a, mm. a little while. A little while. Mm. So we're getting close to two hours, so we're going to kind of open it up to some questions here. Holy I mean, crap, two hours. I know, we, time flies when you're just gaming. Um, so I'm going to kick know. it over to you, dealer. Um, anything you want to shamelessly promote? Anything you want to say to the Xbox fans um, ahead of this launch? Or... I would say that uh, it, it's it's a good time to. <laughs> I've never experienced this before, where uh, you get a you get a system like this and it doesn't have any one particular weakness. It's a very well rounded system, right? And I would say that if you're if you're getting Series X, like just be excited. Like there's some. I think I can tell people what's patched right now, right? That's not against any rules. Um, yeah, for the most part, outside of sp- unless specific games, so you can't. But the general Xbox embar- embargoes are all all lifted at this yeah, point. Yeah, I haven't so. got any emails from any publishers. But right now, for those wondering what's patched, and there are more coming. Uh, AC Valhalla. There's uh, Bright Memory, right? That's the good-looking game from that indie showcase. They it's showed, like eight uh, bucks, first. right? Yeah, it's a, it's only eight dollars. It's like an hour long. It's just like a thing, a demo thingy. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which is 128 gigs or something. Control, uh, control. Hang on, let me actually go to this tab. This will be better. Um, yeah, so there's uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Borderlands 3, uh, Bright Memory Infinite, uh, Call of Duty Cold War, 
You got Control, you got Gears 5, Forza Horizon 4. <laughs> Forza Horizon 4 looks amazing. I don't know. Like, wait till you try that game, too. That's got, yeah, like, I've I've seen PC video. Settings. I've only seen that oh. one secondhand, but that game looks... I mean, it already looked Fort- insane, but... Whew. Fortnite is another one. Uh, Far Cry 6 is in here, RA, uh, even though it's way out. Dirt 5, Gears Tactics, Man Eater. Mortal Kombat 11 has a, an update shortly after launch. Uh, NBA 2K21, the next-gen version, No Man's Sky. Uh, Undead Horde, Sea of Thieves, Planet Coaster, uh, Ori 2, which has a 6K super sampled mode and a 4K 120 mode, Observer, Watch Dogs, Yakuza. Those are the games. And We Happy Few as well. I know that's one of them. Yeah, it was cool mm. to see We Happy Few get some upgrades because that game, it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, it was, it was uncapped, but the, the performance wildly fluctuate, fluctuated, yeah, it's, fluctuated it's on the now. 1X. Yeah. That and State of the K2 are both games that I loved playing, but on the One X in particular, they were not getting close to 60 very often. Here's what it says when you try to move one of these games that needs to be on the internal. So I'll push start. I'll go to uh, manage, uh, move or copy on this. When I, after I go to click manage. And if I select a game for Gears Tactics, it, it has a little uh, marker at the bottom right. It says one or more of your selections needs faster storage. You can move it, but it won't be playable, right? So that's Gears Tactics. but then when I go in, you might want to test these out on your own so you can save as much space as possible. But then I go to Sea of Thieves and I click the same thing, move or copy. I select Sea of Thieves. Nothing pops up. And that's how you know that you can move that and still play cool. it on the external. I like that there's features like that baked in. So people people know, like, you're not going to spend all that time transferring or untransferring a game and then have it be like not run. And then they also mm-hmm. have the, the filter now where you can filter it by games that are actually optimized for Series X and S too, which I really yep. like. Um, That's what I'm doing, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, so, thanks for joining us, though, Chad. Thanks for joining us. 200 people. Uh, absolutely, like button, yeah. Subscribe. Appreciate it. All that good it. stuff. And, uh, you can catch... If you catch... want to follow me... You can, I don't think I did this. If you want to follow yeah. me, you can follow me at Dealer Gaming on YouTube. I'm about to actually drop a video, I guess now. Oh. And uh, I'll have that out so you guys can see a little bit of, of uh, Series X action. And then... Um, yeah, subscribe there. I got a review. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Hopefully, YouTube's updated it to 4K. Uh, for some reason, it's not processing right. And I, I spent a long time, 11 hours on that video or something. Uh, it was crazy, and it sucks to not be able to show the games off. Uh, so maybe it is updated right now. I don't know. I have to check. But <laughs> follow me there and uh, Twitter at dealer underscore gaming. And Miles, thanks for putting up with my rambling today, okay? Oh, no, hey, that's what it's all about. We're just here to BS and ramble about Xbox. That's that's the name of the game. So I'll kick it open. Hang it. Hang, I'll hang out for another five minutes if there's any other questions you guys have. But yeah, again, thanks so much to everyone who hung out today. Um, we'll be back next week uh, working on some guests as well. So I'll be announcing our next guest in the next few days. But um, yeah, if there's anyone else you want to see in particular, any any particular folks in the community you want on the show, hit me up on Twitter, um, just at Miles Uh my, my tags are in the chat right now, thanks to Blondie but Geeky. And then if you want to harass me on Twitter about whatever, um, feel free to do so. Wee oui, wee, oui, Donald, Miles Donier. Oh yeah, before we started streaming, I was telling a dealer how to pronounce my last name. And it kind of varies on, you know, where, where I am. If I'm if I'm in America, if I'm speaking to an American. I'm going to time Metro Exodus low time, by the way, while, we're, while you're telling the story. It's, it's Dom Pierre. Dom Pierre. Or as a lot of my uh, teachers growing up would pronounce Domper, which always is like, come on. Domper? Domper. I had like four or five different teachers growing up who pronounced my last name Domper. I'm like, you're a teacher. Can you not? You can't read? Is that what's going on? I'm supposed I mean, to trust you to teach me to read, but you can't read? Uh, I mean, you know, your name isn't necessarily, uh, you know, normal. Sir. That's true, yeah. But if, you know, if, if I'm trying to impress someone or if I'm trying to be uh, exotic, I'll say, Don't be a. My, you have to, my, yeah, you, you got to do the French version. Because, yeah, yeah it's, I options. mean, if you're, if you're from France, that's how you pronounce it. Don't be a. And you've got to pull out a baguette. Because Pierre yeah, is sniffing. double R-E. Fun little French fact. I'm just French Canadian, so I'm kind of a fake Frenchie, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I still got the cool last name at least. So, um, Darge Knight says I have the coolest hair. Oh, thank you. I um, I try. <laughs> Darge Knight. Miles Candy Corn Dompierre. I'll wear that badge with pride. I will fight Candy Corn for Candy Corn to the death. Is that death. your favorite? Is that your favorite candy? It's, it's not my favorite candy, no. But I love Candy Corn. You like corn. it? It gets a bad rap. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. That's everyone's response. Cause Gross. People are afraid to think for themselves, all right? You know what Miles They're does? buying Miles into the hive mind. candy corn with his feet. And that's what he does. He's a weird man. Uh-huh. I grab the little, little hit- bits with my toes and feed them up, throw them up to my mouth, catch them. <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, uh, Tom, I'm timing the Metro load, as you guys know. And this is on the external SSD. Again, not a massive difference between the external SSD and the internal, according to Digital Foundry. But even on the external T5, it'll only be faster than the internal. Tech Sam uh, says candy corn is minutes. a felony. It really is. Wrong. Wrong. Don't be air. You didn't know this. Uh, still loading. Remember, this load <laughs> time used to be like two minutes on the on the on the one X. People and it's done at thirty-five seconds. So it used no. to be about two minutes. Now it's thirty-five seconds. Which is on the external SSD, so it'll ex- probably be about 30 on the internal. So not even on the internal. Yes, cool. That is awesome to hear. This game's uh, supposed to get a patch too, by the way. We saw a bunch of comparisons with um, PS5 and Xbox Series X load times, and that that was kind of shocking to a lot of people, seeing the the Series X in most cases having mm. better load ca- times with back compat games. Um, Do you know why that is, Miles? Um, because ba- Xbox Series X is more compatible in general. You want to know why? I'll tell you the secrets. Oh, what's your secret sauce? What's here? Here, this is this is why I'm good at what I do, sir. See, look, there's very few people that that know this, and I'm just kind of sitting around watching everybody and just letting the the receipts be collected by particular <laughs> individuals. Now, the PS5 it, it is faster loading. The problem is, is the PS5 uses hardware backwards compatibility. Xbox uses software, so there's something inside of the PS5 that's emulating original hardware at some point, and that is bottlenecking the SSD of the PS5 when loading those old games, and you are not getting that full throughput there because the CPU or something else is not running at that maximum speed like the Series X is. Series X is always maxed out, backwards compatible or not. It's all software, so the SSD is not held up by any particular thing because it's still getting the same throughput. PS5... It's hardware back compact works a bit different. Yeah, and that's that's what we kind of were anticipating when we first heard about PS5 having a hardware based backwards compatibility solution where they're literally down clocking performance to make it run kind of as close as they can to simulating. Yeah, exactly. They want it to run as it did on PS4. So they are simulating that hardware experience. Um, Mm -hmm. Which is why they actually have to boost the 100 games uh, individually, because they have to go in there and basically kind of do a version of what Series X does automatically, um, but with, you know, make sure that game's still stable and stuff, according to my understanding. Yep. Um, And with Series X, you know, when you play a back-to-back game, which is any Xbox One, Xbox One X game, it doesn't even know you're playing. It, It doesn't even know it's not an Xbox One at that point. It doesn't know. The game doesn't know it's running on more powerful hardware. It just takes advantage of what performance is there. That's actually how they got by the ES RAM with the Xbox One X, is because the the GDDR5 is so quick that it doesn't even know the ES RAM is not there. It's pretty interesting. It is. It, it it's again the Xbox One is not the best console. It never was. But the infrastructure that they established with that made it so that this transition into next gen is easy and that there aren't any compatibility issues. I mean, outside mm-hmm. of Connect, Rip Connect, you had a good run. Uh, <laughs> Did it? <laughs> uh, had a very forced the, run. Yeah, it had, it, had a, it had a run. That's that's mm-hmm. for sure. Um, Sheer Khan is asking about this game called Enlisted. Maybe I'm just... Yeah, on. I covered that. It's supposed to have ray tracing, 4K60. It looks all right. Not bad. Like a Call of Duty throwback. Oh, okay, okay. I'll need to check that out then. I'm... I'm Excited for the Ascent as well when it comes to kind of, I mean, another game delayed until like January, but that game looks pretty great as well for us. I keep forgetting what that is. I keep hearing the name. And it's like know. a, oh, that's a top, top down, down kind of Diablo run and gun shooter type thing. Yeah. 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 I remember. Uh, but yeah, Miles, thanks for having me on, man. Thanks everyone who showed up and supported. And again, uh, I'm dropping this video now, I guess. So if you want to check that out and listen to me do some commentary, which you may like if you listen to it. Um, you like the last one, apparently. So uh, check that out. And thanks again. This community, they power everything we do. Um, I, I try to say it. <laughs> I feel like I say it more than, more than most people. And I... Uh, I do appreciate all the support that you guys lend to, to people like myself, Miles, Windows Central, and uh, doing what you do. Thank you. Seriously. 
No, absolutely. Thanks so much for coming on, dude. This was, it's great to sit down and get a like chat one-on-one. Like I said, this is going into it. This is the first time we've got to just sit down and play games. So it's kind of cool to be able to do that and hang out and with this great community chatting about Xbox. There's a ton of positivity in the chat. Haven't really seen anything negative, which is great. A lot of positive energy going into this launch. And it's, it's cool to see, like as someone who's been with Xbox for a while, um, it's great to see a, a lot of positive energy and some of the kind of narratives of the failures of the past shifting and transitioning into pretty much just an entirely an entirely positive launch, which is a far cry from what we got with the Xbox One. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a night and day thing. Uh, now we just need some more software, but they are upgrading a lot of these games for absolutely free. You are getting a different experience on a lot of these games, and you are getting frame rates you've been wanting and the graphic settings you've been wanting. And I think a lot of people will be very surprised because, again, 95% of people came from the base Xbox One. You know, yeah. It's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be a big old jump. So cool. Yeah, everyone, there follow Dealer if you haven't. Check out his new vid. Smash like, all that good stuff. And we'll uh, we'll catch you next Hopefully week. Hopefully it's up in 4K. Ooh, Ooh. Let's see that. All right, have a good one, <laughs> everybody. See ya.